test one, two. Hi, I'm Nadia Combs, Chair of the Hillsborough County School Board. I want to welcome you to Hillsborough County Public Schools. We serve more than 200,000 students. That includes children in preschool through adults in our workforce program. I'm Henry Shake Washington, the Board Vice Chair. Our district is the seventh largest in America, and our team is made up of more than 24,000 people working at nearly 250 sites across the county. Our district is diverse and dedicated. Our board meetings are held in our board auditorium on select Tuesdays at 4 p.m. The best way to serve our students and our community is to involve you, the public, in what we do. You are welcome to email or meet with any of our board members and follow our district on social media. Board meetings are covered live by Hillsborough Schools TV on Spectrum Cable Channel 635 and Frontier Cable Channel 32. Meetings are also streamed live on our website at hillsboroughschools.org. Closed captioning is provided on all broadcasts and past meetings are available in our online archive. We are interested in what the public has to say. We'll include time for audience comments before we address our business items. Our agenda and any supporting materials can be viewed online in advance. They are posted seven days before each meeting on our website at hillsboroughschools.org. Our vision is preparing students for life. And that means all students, every day. Todos los estudiantes, todos los días. Thank you for your interest in education. With your help, we're making decisions that shape our community's future.
The special call board meeting of March 28, 2023 is called to order. Member Washington will now lead us in a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, before the moment of silence, our heart goes out to Covenant Elementary School and the community and the loss of three students and three staffers in Niceville, Tennessee. Please join me in, in a moment of silence. Thank you. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Is Stacy coming? I need a motion and a second to adopt the agenda. I have a motion by Member Gray, and I have a second by Member Perez. Any discussion? Please vote when your lights appear. And it passes unanimously. Let the record reflect that all board members are present, besides Member Hahn, who's, who should be arriving shortly. Board members, I'd like to go over the format of today's meeting. As a reminder, we're a nonpartisan board who believe that all children can be empowered to learn to succeed and our decisions will be made with that understanding. To pave the way for efficient and effective agenda statements and or questions, board members will have three minutes to speak with 30 seconds for final thoughts. Afterward, the superintendent can respond. If you have further questions, you're asked to get back into the queue. Member Washington will now read the board guidelines. Thank you, Madam Chair. As we begin this morning meeting, let me quickly review the format of our school board meetings. Please silence all electronic devices. There are speakers in the room behind me that allow board members to hear the meeting upon stepping away from the dais. This meeting can be viewed with closed caption on live webcasts, on cable TV, on video monitors here in the auditorium. It also can be viewed with closed caption in the online video archives. Thank you, Member Washington. Today we will be having our board co co public comments. Um, our meeting will be um, will end at 12:30. At 12:30, we do have an executive meeting scheduled, and I want to make sure that's time certain. So we currently have um, almost 60 speakers, which will be about a minute and 30 seconds per speaker. So, um, Mr. Porter. Board members, as we begin today, and also for members of the public, this is not a regular board meeting. This is um, what's considered a special call board meeting, and it's to hear an appeal. You're here for a very specific purpose today and one purpose only, and that's to hear an appeal about whether a specific book is appropriate for a specific school. So for public comment purposes, this is not an opportunity to speak about whatever you like, which is normally the case at a school board meeting. This is only to speak about this particular book at this particular school. The record is very important in this case in anticipation of potential litigation. So I'm going to be more involved in this than I normally would be, but we're going to ask the public as you speak, and the board wants to hear from you. Your voice is very important, but only on this one issue. So to the extent that the conversation veers off into something that's not about this book and about this legal appeal, we're going to ask you to stop and cut off your microphone. Our job today is to make sure the record is clear so that you are heard and the board is able to base its decision on the, the law and the statutes and the policies of this board. So to that extent, again, we're going to ask the public for your cooperation to speak, be respectful, but speak to the issue that's before the board today. And at that point, I'll turn it back over to you, Madam Chair. And we'll thank go into more specifics when we get ready to make Okay, decisions. thank you. Um, the board welcomes comments from citizens and values your input to the board. In order to provide the most comprehensive response to your comments, our staff will follow up with you and we'll keep our board informed about the responses. Our school board respects the public's right to speak to the board and we appreciate you taking the time to be here. However, it is requested when you address the board, comments are not directed personally against a board member or staff member, but rather directed at the issues. Public comment will be limited to specific book identified on the agenda. The board has set aside one hour for public comment from the single item on the board's agenda. The board extended for another half an hour. 
Any behavior intended to interrupt the orderly conduct of this meeting will not be allowed. Our civility policies in place. When addressing the board, please state your name and speak clearly into the microphone. This morning, each speaker will have a minute and a half. Reminder that that time starts when you begin speaking. When there are 30 seconds left, you'll see a yellow light on the lectern and a red light and chime will indicate when your time is up. I will now call up the first five speakers. Um, or, yes, yes, please. The first five speakers, please come up. I'm sorry, I was late. So could could you repeat just that first part? Because um, I've been told that we only now have three minutes. Is that correct? I just want to confirm that. No, we had an hour schedule time certain for public comment. We, we extended 30 minutes. So we will have an hour and a half of time certain public comment. Board, and the, no, I'm sorry. Oh, no, for public comments. No, What's public the comments. time for board comments? Uh, board comments will be... Uh, the, the same as always, five, five minutes. minutes. Yeah, and okay. then you can get back at yes. the Okay, just wanted to make I'm sure there wasn't a change. We were only talking about public comment. Thank That's you. why I was clarifying. Thank you. Okay, so just, just for the record, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. There'll be, we intended this board was meeting was scheduled for an hour of public comment. It's been extended to an hour and a half, and the time will be divided up like that. The board member comments will stay at five minutes apiece. Two separate things. Yes, my script was just incorrect. It's five minutes. Thank you. Please, first speaker. The online sign up says two minutes if there's more than 30 people. Just so you know, that's what your online sign up says. Right. And, and again, this was a, okay, hold on, everyone. Okay. We're going to have a long day here. We want everyone to be civil. This is a special call board meeting. The public comment generally is allowed for any topic that the board wants. This is one specific item. And so the decision was reached that it's going to be an hour and a half instead of an hour, and the time will be divided up appropriately. Uh, I, I do just Again, want to go on the have record. A room full I was for three minutes. Okay, we have a room full of people here. It's not helpful to have people shouting from the audience. We want to keep order. We want to hear everyone. And that's sort of, we need to keep control in this. Excuse me. We need to make sure there's civility. And if you'd like to be here, we are very excited about public comment. I've always made sure that people have an opportunity to speak. That's why we've extended it. If you are going to be um, uncivil, then you need to please leave. Thank you. We may begin. My name is Terry Kimpel. I lead Community Issues Council and Protect Our Children Project. You're going to be hearing from people from Hillsborough Grassroots Group today with respect to the book, This Book is Gay. We're here to remind you of Governor DeSantis' recent accusation that Hillsborough County has unlawful pornographic books in your school libraries. I'm reading from State Statute 847.012, subsection 3. A person may not knowingly sell, rent, or loan for monetary consideration to a minor any picture, photograph, drawing which depicts nudity or sexual conduct, sexual excitement, sexual battery, or any book, pamphlet, magazine, printed matter, however reproduced, that contains any explicit and detailed narrative accounts of sexual excitement or sexual conduct and that is harmful to minors. Subsection 5 goes on to state, an adult may not knowingly... Uh, distribute to a minor on school property or post on school property any material described in subsection 3. Please keep the law in mind as the people read from This Book is Gay, which is currently in Hillsborough County Libraries. I'm surprised your attorney hasn't warned you about the risk you run by continually voting for materials that violate the law. We're also interested in knowing what your plans are for the copies of this book that were given to the uh, re reviewers. Thank you. Next speaker. I'm glad you had enough time. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. My name is Terry Rock, and I'm going to be reading from pages 202 to 203, including a diagram on how to have anal sex. Bumming. It is a universal truth that many men like sticking their willies inside things. I suspect it must be biological. Want to know the secret? Straight people have anal sex all the time, too. Another one? Straight men like stuff up their bums just as much as gay ones. Why? As mentioned before, the prostate gland located just up in your bum feels amazing when massaged. Lots of men, gay or straight, like to have this feeling. And, an and anal sex isn't a gay thing. Still, Unlike vaginal sex, a little more thought has to go into anal sex, and here's why. Pre-care. 
As pleasant as bumming can be, we must hold in mind that the primary function of the back passage is to do poos. Poo is not sexy. Therefore, those of you planning to have anal sex, well, you get the rest. Please pull this book from our libraries. Th thank you. Next speaker. I'm glad to see the first speak two speakers have had lots of time and extra time at the end. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Fred Rock. I'm reading a section from this book is gay. It's page 209. Fingers. Far more effective than a penis in many ways. A hand can do the job of five penises. Women refer to having sex. This is usually what they mean. Lesbians can stimulate the clitoris and vagina and bring their partner to orgasm with their fingers. Sometimes both partners can do this simultaneously. Oral. The clitoris really does like being licked and kissed. Again, girls can take it in turns to perform oral sex, or if feeling adventurous, they can perform at the same time. Obscenity in children's books is against the law. Knowingly distributing a book with pornographic slash obscenity to children on school property is against the law. Board members, you are being asked to please be responsive to this request and remove it from our students' library. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, and if we could have the next five speakers please line up. Good afternoon. I'm, my name is Kelly Carling, and I'm mother of four children in the Hillsborough County Public Schools. And I exhort you to remove this book. This book is Gay by Juno Thompson, Ta Dawson. Tampa is the number one ranked city in the country for sex trafficking, and the average age for a child to be first sex trafficked is ages 12 to 14, which is the um, age of these middle school students at Pierce, which contains the book. And I think it's unconscionable that you as a board would condone this book and allow it to be in our libraries when it has step-by-step -step instructions for um, downloading and using a sex hookup app. These are the teenagers just since March 1st who've disappeared in our county. These are children who've been lured away from their homes. From page 156, upload a tiny pic of yourself to the app. Number two, the app works out your location. Three, the app tells you who the nearest homosexuals are. Number four, you chat with them. Five, because they're near, it's easy to meet up with them. And here's some tips, page 187. Include a picture of yourself. If you think the key selling point is your bare chest, we're in bother. Don't be a prawn, great body, I would never eat the head. If you don't give your age, weight, and height, people will assume you're old, fat, and tiny. If that, you're that horny that you wanna do a sex meet, meet the trick in a place, in a public place for a drink first. This is horrible. Thank you, next speaker, please. Good morning, my name is Heather. I'm just gonna read a small, well actually, there's, there's a section on page 199 that depicts a 16-year-old um, that has an affair with an older married man. And I just think that if this was a 16-year-old girl that was having an affair with an older married man, that everyone would be so completely outraged and that is being taught in our schools? Like, our world is so evil right now. We do not need to have y'all propagating this kind of thing from our school. You are in authority over our children. We have given you the gift of teaching our children. And this book has to go. I'm a grandmother and I don't want my grandchild reading this book. If he has a, an issue later and he, when he's older, if he is gay, I will support him and love him and cherish him. However, I think this is very inappropriate. It's wildly inappropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next speaker. Good morning, my name is Molly Blanton, and a previous speaker spoke on Florida Statute 847, and some of that I'd like to expand a little bit on that. <clears throat> 
uh, 847.001 speaks to the explicit and detailed verbal descriptions or narrative accounts of sexual excitement or sexual conduct and that is harmful to minors. The harmful to minors requirement in subsection 847.0017 means any reproduction, imitation, characterization, description, exhibition, presentation, or representation of whatever kind or form depicting nudity, sexual conduct, or sexual excitement when it predominantly appeals to a prurient, shameful, or morbid interest is patently offensive to prevailing standards in the commu adult community as a whole with respect to what is suitable material or conduct for minors, taken as a whole is without serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. <clears throat> The term obscene is uh, also defined in subsection 847. Availability to adults is not the issue. Providing this book, these materials to children as young as 11 years old, any minor children in our public school libraries is inappropriate and illegal in my opinion. I ask you to please take the appropriate action, remove this book and similar materials from our schools. Thank you. Next speaker, please. And if I could have the next five speakers, please line up. Bob Clark, survivor. The issue before us today is whether a child's soul is allowed the time to mature before embarking on an unforgettable life direction. This book, Before, your, before Young Minds Make Sex, an act of animal instinct devoid of compassion and sacrificial love. This book grooms innocence to surrender to the advances of craven wolves. The agenda attempts to silence the cries of lambs. What bewitched, bewitched you to think that we would stand aside to allow our children or any child to be instructed in the ways of a sexually consumed lifestyle that leads them to become wanton, le lecherous, and narcissistic, whose hearts become a lonely hunter? A young, innocent soul groomed to accept sex exploration to accept sex exploitation. Rape is the normal method of satisfaction. This is the murder of a child's soul. You thank, know what to thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. My name is Antonio Anisi. Page 201 states, oral sex is popping another dude's peen in your mouth or indeed popping yours and his. And men like their blowjobs served in different ways. It's more about sucking. To any reasonable person, this book does not comply with Florida law. I know it, you all know it, and everyone here knows it. This is not political, homophobic, or book banning. This is purely about removing an obscene, illegal, pornographic book from a middle school library. The fact that some of you are not able to put emotions aside and rule objectively on issues like this makes us all think you're not fit to, su to serve our school district. The governor and his staff have made it perfectly clear that books like this are not allowed to be given to minors in school. The co this continuous support of some of you makes it clear that you are asking to be removed from your position. Please don't play the victim if you are. You are blatantly ignoring the law and the oath that you swore to uphold when you were elected. In case you've forgotten, the school board works for us. Do the right thing and follow the law that five of you think you're above. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. My name is Tim Driver, and I am the president of the Hillsborough County Black Republican Club. I will be reading from This Book is Gay by Juno Donson on page 206. That said, most of the time, this can be figured out as you go along. As mentioned above, there's no rule that says you have to have anal sex every time you have sex. Far from it. Lube. Unlike the vagina, the anus does not lubricate itself. You need lube if you're going to attempt anal. This is for two reasons. One, anal sex hurts. 
The anus does not have the capacity to stretch the same way a vagina does. This means it's a tight hole, which feels nice for the top, but it also means it can be very uncomfortable for the bottom. With the right water-based lube, however, it can be hugely enjoyable, a good kind of pain like a deep tissue massage. Two, lube makes it less likely for your condom to split. The anus is a pretty fragile membrane, which means it's easier to get STIs through anal sex than vaginal. This language can be considered obscene and violates Florida Statute 847.001, harmful to minors, and Florida Statute 847.012. This book is gay, is not for minors, and should not be returned to the library bookshelves. By returning it to the bookshelves, as school board members, you will be knowingly violating Florida Statute 1006.40. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next speaker, please. Good morning, my name is Libby Cope. I'm the media specialist at Lato High School. I thank you for your adherence to the policies and procedures set forth in challenging library media materials in our district. I read this book is gay in its entirety, which as we know is one of the procedures for challenging materials in Hillsborough County. I hope that all voting members today have read the book from cover to cover. All media specialists in Hillsborough County select books that, I'm sorry, all media specialists in Hillsborough County that select books are either certified or hold a master's in library in information science. We take into account many factors during our collection development process, including but not limited to the needs of the students at our school and professional reviews. The committee notes state that past students requested more LGBTQ plus books. A media specialist does not merely purchase recommended books, they do their due diligence. This means the media specialist looked for books that were appropriate for her students and had positive reviews. She decided to add this book to her collection. The book was challenged so the committee read the book. After reading the book, she and her committee found this book to be good for their students. In fact, it was a unanimous decision at the school level. She knows what's best for her population. She knows and so do I. I say that because her kids become my kids. The majority of students at Lato High School come to us from Pierce Middle School. I can tell you without a doubt, this book is gay is needed for the students at Pierce Middle School. The people who are in the trenches at Pierce, the people who are doing the work, the people who know that particular problem population more than anyone else voted unanimously you. to keep thank this book. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. My name is Bailey Turnquist. I'm a freshman at Lato High School. I am here to prevent the removing of books of becoming a trend. I find it completely unnecessary to request any book to be removed. I may not agree with the content, but others might, and how is it my decision to choose what is to be read and what is not? How is it my decision to choose what someone else's child consumes? It takes a village to raise a child. The village helps to raise a child, but it is the parent or parent's responsibility to set the perimeters of how the child is to be raised. It is not up to another what one does with one's child. My mother decides what she wants or does not want me to consume in the media. That is her job as a parent, to guide and parent me. However, what is not her job is to make decisions for other people's children concerning beliefs and other ideologies. When I was in middle school, I was one of the few that did not have any form of social media. My mother did not agree with me having any platform. Currently, I am allowed certain social media platforms, not including Instagram. All of my friends and basically my generation have this app. Does my mom remove Instagram from every other child's home? Phone, sorry. Anything found on social media platforms is much worse than whatever is in a singular book. I would like to ask those in favor of removing this book if their children have social media, and if so, then do they monitor the apps? My mom does. Almost every night like clockwork, my mother checks my text messages and my social media accounts. To some, this may seem extreme or a violation of privacy, but that is their opinion. It is easier to not allow one's child to read a singular book than to track the digital footprint of said child. In the words of Epictetus, Keep your attention focused entirely on what is truly your own concern, and be clear that what belongs to others is their business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Good morning. My name is Michael Sherino. It is morally reprehensible and shameful that we have to gather today to debate this issue of whether or not pornographic content should be allowed in our children's public schools, and it's flat out disgusting that a group of individuals here are defending it in the name of social justice and public education. An excerpt from the book, This Book is Gay, says the following. 
As with hand jobs and breakfast eggs, all men like their blowjobs served in different waves. The term blowjob is massively misleading, as you won't actually be blowing on his penis. It's more about sucking, although I stress you're not trying to suck his kidneys out through his urethra. It's about sliding your mouth up and down the shaft of his cock. This is only a couple of the, this is only one of the excerpts in the book that displays this extremely obscene language. Members of the board, please don't fall for the nonsense that removing this book from the schools would be fascism or an attack on LGBT people. This is about protecting the innocence of children, regardless of sex, gender, race, or ethnic background. I strongly suggest you take whatever action possible to remove this from our school libraries as soon as possible, and I definitely would not suggest you continue to bite the hand that feeds you. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. <clears throat> um, I have a question for you. Do I have the right to protect my children from being exposed to sexually explicit content that I deem age inappropriate? Because as soon as someone puts this library book in a middle school library, no longer am I in control of what my children are reading. They don't have my guidance. Parents are hardly even allowed in schools anymore. So you are only pretending that parents have a say in this. Parents aren't even allowed to come into the schools for the most part. And parents would never dream that these books would fill our school library shelves. Now listen, everyone still has a right to give their child whatever book they want to. So I'm suggesting you remove this book from schools and everyone's rights are preserved. These books are not being banned. That word has become a weapon to marginalize the voices of parents. Nazi book banning and the like has essentially been used to eliminate books from circulation. We're not doing that. We're asking you to keep them out of the reach of our children. It has never been controversial to protect children from certain things. We will fight for children in the future of our country against the sexualization. We will find a way to hold people accountable who are responsible for putting these books in our libraries. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. My name is Laura Kissick. I have several thoughts to share with you today about this book. Number one, in the Pierce Committee minutes, it states pictures are in cartoon form, as if this is to make it okay. Cartoons are a drawing, and as such, drawings depicting nudity or sexual content are still against Florida law, as stated in Statute 847.012. Number two, School District Policy 9130 states no challenged material may be removed solely because it presents ideals that may be unpopular or offensive. This book is not simply about being offensive. Giving minors access to this book is against Florida law, period. This isn't about some personal offense. Number three, glossary of the, the glossary of the book mentions the term scat, which is eating poop. Really? Do we really have to subject middle schoolers to this? Is eating poop a need of the community and the students in the school system? Number four, abstinence is the state standard when it comes to official sex education in the schools. Why should we have a book promoting sexual activity to students, whether they be gay or straight? They shouldn't be having sex, period. We should expect all students to hold themselves to higher standards and not get involved with sex until adults. Schools is the place and time to focus on academics, not doing blowies and bumming. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker. And if the next five speakers can please come up. Uh, good afternoon, board. I'm going to keep this brief here. Major Maxim, U.S. Army, retired. Uh, you are violating, the board is uh, violating Florida Statute 847. You need to ensure that you enforce that law, okay? Make sure you enforce that law. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, my name is R.L. Hill. The last time I stood before you, I told you I wanted to thank you for what you are doing. And then I also advised you that I couldn't because of what you were doing. And I thank the people behind me that are working to re remove this obscenities and pornography from our schools. I don't know how five of you can sleep at night, but let me read excerpts that may help you understand. This book is Gay by Juno Dawson. Here is a diagram of a boy if you are also a boy, you are probably aware of which parts feel nice which you, when you touch them. But here, are, here is a rough guide, the lips. 
Sex should always start with a kiss. Initially, you should not go any further than a kiss. In fact, kissing is as intimate as sex, and if you're not comfortable going further a, than a kiss, a good partner will respect this and wait. Nipples. A lot of guys like having their nipples played with, and they are mega sensitive. Testicles. Also to be treated with loving care. Do your jobs. That's all we're asking you to do is do your jobs. Thank you. Next speaker, um, and if I could get speakers 21 to 26 to please line up. Thank you. My name is Chris Beard, and these statutes have been read that are in violation of the law. This applies to books with obscene material, such as on page 210 that I'm going to read. And the media specialist was speaking about all their rights and 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 having all of this available, but the bottom line, it's against the law. It's against the law. So listen carefully to me as I read what's on page 210, which makes me sick. Let's talk about dildos. I think a lot of people assume that where there is no penis, a desperate sexual void is created, out of which something dick shape must ultimately slot in order to satisfy a vagina. Basically, there are holes everywhere, but you don't have to fill them all, not necessarily even with your tongue, and not with something penis-shaped either. I think most good orgasms revolve around the clit, well, for me and mine anyway. If you then want to get a bit fancy, there's nothing wrong with a few fingers inside. But that's orgasms, and as great as they are, it's not always about them. Will you be reading this to your grandchildren, to your children? Will you? I won't. If they need information, they can get it from their parents in a, in a private conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi. Good morning. I'm Stephanie Ashcroft. And I, I'm here. To, I wanted to clear up some things about the challenge. As you mentioned, Mr. Porter, this is about specifically in Pierce Middle School, which serves 11-year-olds. Okay. Um, and it has nothing to do with the high schools, older children. It's all about the middle school, so 11 to 14-year-olds. And if you read the challenge itself, it has to do with age appropriateness and safety. The publisher itself, whose goal is to make money and reach the widest audience possible, says this is not appropriate until age 14. On the Hillsborough County Media website, it says this is for grades 10 through 12. I can pull it up for you. Okay, why, how is this appropriate for a sixth grader? We're not following our own website guidance. Secondly, how is a book that outlines how to find no strings attached sexual partners online okay for an 11-year-old? Again, this has nothing to do with high schools. It's all about 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, 13-year-olds. I don't know anyone who would be okay with an 11-year-old finding a sexual partner on, online. This challenge was submitted long ago back in over Labor Day weekend, September, beginning of September. I'm sad and it's taken this long to come here, and I'm sad and it's now become a political issue, and it's politically challenged, because that is not the intent of the challenge. It has to do with protecting our kids. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Cheryl Stoker, and this is an ex excerpt from the book, This Book is Gay. Handies, perhaps the most important skill you will master is the timeless classic, the hand job. The good news is you can practice on yourself. The bad news is each guy has become very used to his own way of getting himself off. Learning how to find a partner's personal style can take ages, but it can be very rewarding when you do. Something they don't teach you in school is that in order to be able to come at all, you or your partner may need to finish off with a handy. A lot of people find it hard to come through other types of sex. This is fine and certainly not something you have to apologize for. A good handy is all about the wrist action. Rub the head of his cock back and forth with your hand. Try different speeds and pressures until he responds positively. A bad handy is grasping a penis and shaking it like a ketchup bottle. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Thank you. 
Good morning. My name is Dorothy Pulcher. The District Appeals Committee believes students at Pierce Middle School already know of porn and sexually explicit material by online and through other students. They claim this book serves to clarify misconceptions about related topics. That approach is irrational and dangerous and has exposed minors to instructions on blowjobs, anal sex, the use of a strap on, and how to have sex encounters on an adult app, Grinder. The district legal advisor said the book identifies itself as an instructional manual, and if made as a movie, it would be for 17 and older persons. That's R-rated material. Books create images in the minds of young children, hence it is a movie to them. When a child selects a book in a school library, they know little about how it got to the shelf. They believe they have permission from adults to read, imagine, and do what is found in the pages. You have a duty to make available age-appropriate materials. This book, with its how-to approach about sex, doesn't meet this definition. I ask you to remove this book from Hillsborough County Schools. It's against state statutes. And I don't want this book in the schools, not on my dime. Next speaker, please. We could get the speakers to move up and come up quickly. Thank you so much. My name is Rachel. I live on McDill Air Force Base with my husband and two children who attend Hillsborough County Public Schools. I read This Book is Gay over the weekend. I'm a Florida native. I did all my schooling here. While going to Florida schools, I was exposed to pornographic material. I will read you the pornographic material, which was mandatory in my school, by the way. This entire book was mandatory. Your navel is a rounded bowl. Your waist is a mound of meat surrounded by lilies. Your breasts are like two fawns. Your breasts are like clusters of fruit, and I will climb the tree and take its fruit. That is from Song of Solomon in the Bible. I attended. Stop the time. We're here to talk about this book is gay. I have a point. Okay, so if you could get to your point, because again, this is about this specific book in this specific school. Yes, and I'm saying that if that if if this book is gay, violates 847.001, then so does the Bible. Yes. Okay, that is my point. Moving along, Dawson's book is fine. I am a professional book reviewer. It explicitly states that readers should look at the book and say, hmm, that exact line is in the text. It does not tell minors to do any of these things. Education is a human right, and we should allow children to read things in schools because none of these parents are actually teaching sex ed or queerness at home, and data shows that. So they're not learning that. And if we're investing in children's future, then we should invest in things that actually have positive health outcomes and positive outcomes for queer kids instead of bullying and suicide, which is what we currently have under abstinence education and no queer education. So I thank all of you, the five of you who support this. Thank you, next speaker. And audience, if you would please be respectful to both sides, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Next. Good morning. My name is Mayosha Powell. Um, I'm just going to read a few things, and I just want to uh, reiterate to bear in mind that we are referencing 11 to 13, 14-year-olds. Um, I'm just going to read a few excerpts from uh, This Book is Gay. If you are that horny, and this is relating to the sex app, um, grinder. If you are that horny that you, wanna, you want to do a sex meetup, meet the trick in public for a drink first. That's concerning, especially since we deal with such high rates of sex trafficking here in Florida, especially in Tampa. Um, it goes further to say, to warn children, if you're on Grinder under the age of 18, it happens. Be aware that swi- swiping, adult, uh, swiping adult pics is actually illegal. You are distributing, distributing child pornography, even if it's of yourself. Again, we're, we're discussing 11 to 13, 14 year olds. If you were an adult, this is, there's no problem, but we're, we're referencing children. Um, moreover, it, it does encourage that children go, or if you're putting it in front of children, children will be encouraged to go to the Grinder app. So I just asking respectfully that this be removed from the school. Um, in all schools in Hillsborough County, especially because of the target age, the age that it's targeting. This is not a material at all suited for children. It's for adults. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. My name is Nina Tatlock, and I want to say that I've read through both reviews from the Pierce Middle School and the district level review. I support the work that they have done 
for their assessments of the book, This Book is Gay. I support the district's review system for books and ask that this system remain in place. I will support our democratically elected school board's decision on this book. And this does pertain to um, laws that have been read this morning. I want to state that I do not support authoritarian bullying tactics that are coming down from Tallahassee. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. My name is Melanie Lax. Thank you for the opportunity this morning, and thank you for the work that you do every day. I want to ask the board to uphold the recommendation of both the reviews and keep the book, This Book is Gay, at Pierce Middle School. The Pierce Middle School team that reviewed the book knows and works with the students there every day. And it was their decision that upper level classes at that school would find that book valuable. Members of that community that are vulnerable need that book. I'm not asking you to go outside of the process. It's been respected. I'm asking you to please uphold the process. It works. The people who work at that school think those children need that book. I'm asking you to please uphold that recommendation today. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, everyone. Well, good afternoon. Sean Roberts, the founder of AMRAC Anti-Bully Organization. So I'm here to say that um, we're standing up here not to be on sides. We're standing up here for kids, and that includes the LGBT kids as well. This affects all kids. I remember growing up just playing, having fun. Where, where are we as a society? where well, we have these books that are destroying the core of us as humans, and that's kids. Now, I'm standing up here for society. We have fallen, and we have to come back. We include the kids that are on the other side. There's a lot of hurt in this room. There's a lot of trauma in this room, and these books are part of the trauma. So please keep these books out and let's focus on the mental illness and the trauma that's affecting these people. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. My name is Caleb. Um, I'm here listening to the evidence being presented here and it's uh, anyone with any intellectual honesty at all can recognize that the content in this book is by definition pornographic and that distributing porn to minors is illegal. Whether or not you like it or not, it, it doesn't matter. It is illegal. Therefore, to put it in the schools means you must first change the law before you can do that, at least if you care about being legal, right? So then my question goes to, okay, what is, what is the motivation here? Why would anyone want a book like this to minors? Why would anyone want to defend this? I mean, is, it, is it pedophilia? I certainly hope not. That's obscene. But there is also a, there's a far left um, extreme cult out there that just seeks to indoctrinate people. Um, and getting the children when they're as young as possible is a pretty good recruitment strategy. Um, I would like to just remind you that I don't grovel at your feet. I don't bow down to you. You work for us. So don't you dare whiz on us, tell us, right, tell us it's raining, and then ask us for your jobs back next election. Next speaker, please. Yeah, real quick here, okay. I'm here to ask you some questions. I'm sure this meeting is not exactly what you wanted to do on a Tuesday morning. Uh, most of us have been, most people have been down here every meeting since at least August fighting against this one book in our school libraries. We've been reading from this book that you agree with. I challenge you to read this to a child. A couple of things I'm asking you to consider during this meeting. The people here, this meeting are speaking up for their parental rights, have taken off of work or paid babysitters in order to be here. This may be just another day at the office for you, but for us it's so much more. 
Book banning. Who is book banning this book? Have parents demanded this book be taken out of local libraries? Have they asked for it not to be on Amazon or in a Barnes & Noble bookshelf? Can parents, if they choose, still go locally to purchase this book for their child to have access to? All those answers point to no one is banning a book. However, we do ask this book removed from our schools where kids have free access to the material. How is removing this book stop any other parent from giving it to their child? Parents are simply fighting for their parental rights and not allowing their children to have access to this book. Many are, and many just like it. Some people were laughing when, when someone brought up teaching abstinence when, when it was being mentioned. Why is teaching abstinence to middle schoolers ages 11 to 14 so funny? Final question is why parent permission slips are used for children in schools to join a sport, certain clubs, or even watch a particular movie during class, yet you don't think books have the same precautions. Who's liable if a child does meet up with a stranger for sex? Thank you. Next speaker, and I make sure that uh, speakers 31 through 36 are up there. If we could please keep moving along quickly. Thank you. 31 to 36. Good morning. My name is Gay Jones. On pages 182 and 183 of This Book is Gay, the reader is introduced to Grinder. Grinder, it claims, is a market leader in sex apps and that the minimum user age is 18. What follows is a how-to for getting started, which involves a user posing, posting a photo on the site, and immediately the app pinpoints the user's location and provides information on, quote, who's the nearest, who the nearest homosexuals are, end quote. What could possibly go wrong? Could underage participants use this app? Yes, they could. From a 2021 NPR article entitled How Grindr, a Popular Gay Dating App, Poses Exploitation Risk to Minors, we learn, quote, the dating app Grindr is supposed to be for men seeking men, but many underage boys are using it to hook up with adults, and that can put them at risk of exploitation and trafficking. More than 100 men across the United States have faced charges since 2015 related to sexually assaulting or attempting to meet minors for sex on Grindr, end quote. <clears throat> There's, these are just a few. Idaho man raped 13-year-old boy after meeting him on Grinder. Delaware man arrested for setting up a three-way with a 16-year-old. HIV-positive Texas teacher has sex with 15-year-old he met on Grinder. Idaho teacher sex 16-year-old, leading him to attempt suicide. And finally, in October of 2022, a Michigan man was found guilty of murdering, dismembering, and cannibalizing his Grinder date. These are just a few reasons why the Sarasota and Pinellas County Sheriff's Department include Grinder on Thank its you. list of Thank you. Next speaker. I, I cut you off, but I gave you an extra few seconds. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Next speaker. Oh, I, don't have I, I did give you an extra five seconds. Thank you. Okay. You're done. Thank you. Next speaker. I'm asking you to remove this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jordan. I'm a lifelong Floridian business owner and taxpayer. I'm here today because I'm concerned about a book that I recently found it's called This Book is Gay. It's actually quite interesting because frankly, so am I. So why would I think it's a bad idea to have this book be accessible to children? Wow, this mic is so low, I'm like bending down. Well, if you actually look at the content, it's difficult to deny that this type of material is inappropriate, and that's an understatement. We all know what's in it. I don't have to elaborate on that. But what I will elaborate on are the effects this type of material will have on children. I can't believe I have to explain this, but children are like sponges. Your son or daughter's brain is hypersensitive to reward stimuli, meaning behaviors can become habitual very quickly. When explicit content is consumed during adolescence, the brain creates neural pathways that crave sexually explicit content, resulting in an adult brain that craves supernormal stimulus. I want to read a quick expert from the American College of, pa of Pediatricians. Exposure of explicit content to adolescents and young adults often leads to a distorted view of sexuality and fostering healthy relationships. These perspectives make it more difficult for young people to form lasting, meaningful, meaningful relationships, which will ultimately result in more anxiety, depression, and overall dissatisfaction. Is there any question why there is a mental health crisis in this country right now? Look at what happened in Nashville a couple days ago. We have to take a serious look at what our children Thank are you. consuming. Next speaker. Thank you. Next speaker. My name is Donald Morgan. I have read the February 10th and February 24th, uh, 21st minutes of the District Reconsideration Appeals Committee. 
I applaud the professional manner in which this review process for the book, This Book is Gay, has been conducted. It is of paramount importance to note that the review process has been based on the principles of democracy upon which our republic has been founded. To wit, Benjamin Franklin stated at the end of the Constitutional Convention of 1787 in response to a question of what had been wrought, quote, a republic if you can keep it, unquote. A key principle upon which a republic is based is that the majority rules, not an overly loud and raucous minority which attempts to usurp our republic by intimidation via outscreaming the majority and by implying not so subtle threats of violence if that minority's will is thwarted. One of my children is non-binary, has a five-month-old daughter with her partner who's a transgender woman. This woman is a Marine Corps veteran of Afghanistan with a Purple Heart from an IED incident. She uh, has survived the avoiding amputation of her right leg only at the cost of lifelong pain and suffering and titanium plates. The book This is Gay had better be in the library of a Florida school my granddaughter will attend in middle school. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi there, my name is Kathleen Daniels. As a resident and current president of our state school library association, I have the opportunity that I recently went to go up to Tallahassee to speak with legislators, both House representatives and Senate, both Democrat and GOP. Across the board, legislators agree that banning books is bad. What seems to be the problem is what constitutes as pornography. Unlike many of those who spoke today and the last week's meeting, citing the statute does not make it so. In fact, if you read the entire book, as I did yesterday, you would read that the book actually does address what pornography is, and it is not sex education. It advises youth under 18 to avoid apps like Grindr due to a multitude of problems, and even after 18 addresses the problems with apps like that. I'm here to advocate not only to keep the book at school, at the school, but also to advocate to uphold the previous committee's decisions. Both the school site and the district level committee voted to keep the book. Isn't local control valuable? Aren't the community and stakeholders of the school's decision extremely important? Ultimately, the book is not pornography. Pornography, even said the lawyer. Truly, if it would be illegal and it would be unethical to read pornography excerpts aloud in a public setting. I don't see anybody being carted away in handcuffs. Our state organization, FAME, serves all schools, public, charter, and private, so this is not a stance that's just for public school. Protect students' rights to quality resources that are vetted. Protect students' rights to intellectual freedom. Protect LGBTQ representation for students. Protect the values and votes of the local community and keep a resource that is seen as valuable in schools to those thank, who need thank it. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. I'm Nadele Lafita, and I'm a senior from Leto High School. Representation matters. As a little kid, I always thought liking other girls was unusual. It was imprinted into my mind that it wasn't socially acceptable to like the same gender. Movies showed men and women in relationships, but never anything else. I just needed someone to tell me that it was okay to like whomever I needed. I wanted to share my story, not for pity, but to spread awareness of the problems behind being in the LGBTQ community that go unproved on a day-to-day basis. If I had this book in middle school, it would have made it easier to discover my true self. Someone who isn't afraid to love whom they love. This book gives awareness to a topic that is barely represented. At the end of the book, it states many resources kids can go to if they ever need help or someone to relate to, just like I did. Resources I could have used in middle school but did not have access to. The school is not forcing anyone to read it. It's in a library waiting to get checked out by someone who does need it. Kids should be able to have their questions answered. Everything in this book can be found on the internet, so what is the difference? Some people don't have parents, friends, or anyone to go to. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Alicia Nunez, and I'm a senior at Leto High School. Ever since I could walk, ever since I could walk, I picked up books that piqued my interest. Some of my fondest memories are of reading nonfiction books about historical events. My parents would love to surprise me on my birthday with a new story that I could dig my fingers into. I remember forming deeper connections with people after reading about different cultures. It allowed me to learn about different people's lifestyle. This non this nonfiction book can be used as a guide for students who are questioning their sexuality. It can also be used as an information source for others who are sure 
um, of who they are, but they want a deeper understanding of other people's desires. Some people believe that this book should be removed because it is not deemed age appropriate, but according to the University of Washington, kids begin to explore their sexual feelings by age 10. It states that middle school kids start to develop an interest in romantic relationships. A lot of young adults do not have worthy source of information, so they rely on the, on the information they find on the internet, and this can often be misleading. This book is not being forced onto any particular student. It is in the media center for those who need to who need it or choose to read it. It can be used as an adequate guide in exploring who they are as individuals. It is safer for a kid to read a reliable source that has been approved and purchased by a media specialist rather than to be misinformed by a non-credible source. One could argue that this it would be hypocritical to remove this book from the school library because there are books that are that inform kids of heterosexual relationships. We need non-fiction books that are inclusive, books that discuss same-sex relationships and teaches kids that need nonfiction books that are inclusive. The kids that select this book have demonstrated that they have doubts about their sexual feelings and they want to learn more about who they are. I have always found books as a place of comfort where I can be my authentic self. Thank, so thank why should you. we take this away from thank us? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Javier Rosario and I'm a cisgendered heterosexual senior at Leto High School. When I first heard about this book and the controversy surrounding it, I questioned the function of a school. Many will agree with me when I say that a school's job is to educate kids and provide them with materials to be successful and learn whatever they need to know about the world. This means that a school's job is to teach and prepare kids for the next step in life. And in middle school, this is a topic that should be taught to prepare kids for life. If sixth graders are old enough to learn about heterosexual sex and heterosexual lifestyles, then they should be old enough to learn about homosexual sex and homosexual lifestyles. And it is your job to give them access to that knowledge. If a parent feels that their child should not read this book, then that's completely valid. But it is up to them to regulate and police what their child consumes. Even if this book does get removed from peers, there are a million other ways to discover the same information. Some a lot more dangerous than others, but overall, a school cannot and should not be responsible for every person's parenting style. Besides, most kids will just laugh at how it says gay and then go tell their classmates so they can laugh together. They will probably never actually read the book or take it seriously meaning that in a middle school, two kinds of children are going to read this book. Children who are mature and looking to learn about the LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus community, and kids who actually need to discover who they are, because with all the homophobia middle schoolers deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, they might just need a book to discover themselves. People aren't going to change their gender or sexuality because of a book. It's not that good. But all the kids... Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker. Hi, my name is Shannon Cordova Og, and I am a parent of three young children in Hill they will be in Hillsborough County Schools. I want to thank all of our democratically elected school board members today and just give you a, a couple of statistics. LGBT youth are four times more likely to attempt suicide than their peers. And teen suicide is very high among children 10 to, to 20 anyways. Banning books that educate teens will only increase the likelihood of suicide. So I ask you to think about the mental well-being of our children and having access to resources. Books under enhance the understanding of topics and history. All the excerpts that were read today were nitpicked out of the book. They didn't mention the resources that are in the book. I did read the book about coming out, about safety, and these are very important things for young children to learn about if they're exploring their sexuality. Simply reading a book about gay topics will not make someone gay. Removing and banning books will not erase the gay. It only fosters a hostile environment of intolerance and hate, and our world is becoming more hateful and more intolerant, especially here in Florida. As an LGBT person, I feel it all the time. And I'm here to stand for those young children that are exploring their own sexuality. Thank you. And if we could please have speakers 38 to 43 to please line up, 38 to 43. 
Good morning. My name is Tanya Greenblatt. My pronouns are she, her. I am a parent of three children at McFarland Park Elementary, where I am an active board member of the PTA and a regular volunteer in the School Media Center. I'm also an ordained Reformed Jewish cantor, serving Congregation Beth Am and its 200 member families. While I am not here today representing any of those organizations, my roles with them inform my comments. I'm here today to speak for inclusion and against the removal of This Book is Gay by Juno Dawson, or any book, from any school library in our district. Our job as parents is to help our children navigate the information they come across and to make sense of content that upsets, troubles, confuses, or challenges them. As parents, we have the right and responsibility to frame what they learn so that they will filter new information through the lens of our values. If a book is removed from a library or a school, it takes away a learning opportunity for all children, not only those whose parents might object to his content. If you as a parent choose to curate your own child's experience by limiting their access to content that you find objectionable, you have the option to communicate that intent directly to your child. If you don't trust your child to follow your rules, you can involve your child's teacher or media specialist who will be able to guide your child to what you would consider appropriate. You do not, in my opinion, have the right to limit what my child or anybody else's can choose to read. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello. I am Theodore Greenblatt. I am a student at McFarland Park Elementary School. I am a kid of Tanya Greenblatt. I am in first grade, and I like the library because whenever I need to find a book that I need to read, I just ask my media specialist if they can find it, and they'll give me my the book that my grade can read, and if they bear could have been a book in my grade that I could read. Then if I asked my media, media specialist t to find me a book, they might, might not find any book. And that is the reason why I think this book should not be banned. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello. Good morning. My name is Gita Schmidt, and I am a parent of four kids, two adults, two younger ones that are still in the district, and two older ones that are adults. So, But they went through Hillsborough County District. Um, I am very active on our schools as a volunteer, and um, I agree with Tanya with everything she's said so far. So I'm here to speak against the banning of this book is gay. Yes, the book has parts that are probably not appropriate, but if you read the book cover to cover, it will also explain. A lot of things give kids resources that they need to learn. If you don't agree with a book, speak to your child. Banning books has proven throughout history to be a terrible consequences. A parent's job is to guide their kids through life, and the more information, the better. Books are meant to be read and discussed, agreed or disagreed, but never banned. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, my name is Sharon Graham, and I am here um, to speak in support of the process that is in place for um, assessing and reviewing um, anything that is brought at the school level, at the district level, and then the school board level. We have these processes in place to provide local considerations as well as 
input from the community. And I think that is the utmost importance. Um, I would like to say that I have read this book is gay from cover to cover. I would also um, like to share, I have read the reviews and assessments that have been conducted. I support those. I also support any um, decision that comes from the school board and I support um, your ability to make that determination. And I thank you so much for your work. And I would also like to say that um, I think that for children who do not have um, access to information and support at home, I can see the value of it being provided. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. My name is Carmen Edmonds. Thank you for allowing us all to speak today. First, I want to start off by reiterating that no one here opposed to this book is against the LGBTQ community. We're just simply not. We are not for banning books. That's not what we're calling for. And we are not calling on publishers to stop publishing these books. We are not asking for local retail stores to ban them or limit access to them to adult patrons who want to purchase them, whether for themselves or for their children. That's their choice. What we are asking for is the school board to follow the law the book, This Book is Gay, clearly violates Florida State Statute 847. We are asking you to protect our children, to follow the law. Let me ask, how many of you on this board would allow your own 11-year-old child access to this book? A book that teaches them how to access adult dating apps. A book that teaches them casual hookups and porn is normal. This is nothing short of setting our children up for exposure to predators and groomers. Florida ranks number three in the country in human trafficking. Children go missing and are exploited every week in our, in our county. What I don't understand is why the school board continues to ignore state law and in turn puts our children at risk. We must do better. We must remove age inappropriate books, and that's all we're asking, just remove age inappropriate books from our school libraries. And for some of the people making the statement like kids should monitor themselves at school, well, as a parent, we can't follow our kid to school. We can limit what they have exposure to at home, but when they're on your watch, we don't have that. And I've addressed this before with the school, thank, with thank drugs you. and everything thank you. else. Next speaker, thank you. Hi, my name is Simon Rowe. I'm here to speak against the banning of This Book is Gay. While the book came out while I was in high school, I read many books through my K through 12 schooling here in Florida without my parents' permission. I am concerned that in meetings like this one, students are losing the right to a decent education. Part of growing up to be a well-rounded person is being exposed to different people and perspectives. For LGBT teens, having books like This Book is Gay can provide life-saving info, and for cishet teens, they get to learn about a community. If books like these can make children and teens aware about healthcare, teach some history, or give them hope to survive to adulthood, all things this book does, then they are worth keeping on the shelf. Students and teachers should be able to curate their own libraries. We know the consequences of the alternative. Many LGBT children face bullying in school, and adults legalizing it only makes it worse. LGBT children's health and safety should be protected, and that includes access to information. And when a teenager has a limited access access to communities online in real life to, to abuse, often due to so-called parents like you'll see before you in public comment, a book like this in a public library can make a difference for their survival in a world where people would rather be, them be dead than gay. Speaking from personal experience, I read a book in high school, I checked it out from my local library, and that's how I realized I was bisexual. And so I am here to have that same love and support for children here in our schools, they should have the opportunity to know that it is okay to be themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. My name is Kathy James. Um, I'd like to encourage y'all not to ban this book from Pierce Middle School. You know, the last time I spoke to elected officials about banning books was in 2005 when uh, then County Commissioner Rhonda Storms uh, had some problems with books in our public libraries around the county. Um, 18 years later, here we are. This is just the toe in the water for the group of people who have wanted to ban this book. 
So please be careful about banning any books. The process seems terrific. Unanimously, the Pierce Middle School Educational Media Materials Committee uh, unanimously said, let's keep it in the library. And then the District Reconsideration Appeal Committee, eight to two in favor of keeping it in the library. Be careful about banning books. It doesn't end well. Thanks. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Dave Coleman, and I'm from Hillsborough County. I actually live here. And um, um, I was here last week, and um, there was only like two or three people that were in support of keeping um, this book. And um, it just went on and on and on for an hour and a half of the excerpt reading um, from the other side. I'm so glad that there are a more fair representation of our actual community here today. And um, I do agree with some a previous speaker who said that there were police in, in, in this room and, and, in, and in front of a child. Um, just some really questionable things were being read in front of a child. Um, I, I really, um, <clears throat> I didn't sit in last week's meeting. I, I spoke number five and my, a friend was speaking at 51, so I went outside. I could not sit and listen to what you guys had to endure last week. I wasn't about to sit and listen to that. Um, there is an um, introduction um, to chapter nine um, by the author that's, that is clearly says this, this, this chapter is about sex and that's what we're gonna talk about and if, you're not, if you don't wanna go there, d don't. Um, it, it is suggested as a 14 to 17 year old um, readership um, by the author. Um, so if it doesn't end up staying in, in a middle school, um, the other two places where it's found is a tech school and a high school library, um, I'd be all for that. Um, I, I do want just this Saturday, and you can find this easy enough, Juno Dawson um, did a thing, the author of uh, Thank you. Next speaker. Thank you. Next speaker. Next speaker. Hi. My name is Lisa. Uh, before I get started, I just want to let you know that I did give a copy of the article that I'll be reading from to uh, this person over here. It's been placed into the record. Thank you so much. Um, Exposing a child to pornography is a crime in the state of Florida. Grooming a child is a crime in the state of Florida. Florida is third in human trafficking. You've heard that repeatedly today. Um, Tampa is third. Um, I think it's clear that this particular book contains pornographic material and images. Um, the stats that I pulled are from the National Center of Sexual Exploitation, and the article is called Damage Caused by Childhood Exposure to Pornography. Uh, it states adolescents are more susceptible than adults to addictions and to developmental effects on the brain. Accordingly, there are many potential negative consequences related to children viewing pornography. I'd like to call on Governor Ron DeSantis. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Thank you. Brian Paris, we, this is breaking a lot. Oh, everybody said it earlier. This is your time. Yeah, thank you. I know. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, human trafficking is number three in the Tampa Bay area. Nothing seems like it's being done about it. It keeps getting worse and worse. We live in a city where there's, we're number one in, uh, 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 strip clubs. And so it's easy to, to manipulate the children. China said they'd take over our country without firing one bullet with indoctrination and Marxism. This is what's going on. Manipulate. I can't believe I just watched child abuse happen right in front of me. You, someone using their child to use this situation as indoctrination. Sir, please stick to the book. We're talking about the book. This is about why, why are you muting? Why are you muting? There we Thank you. Okay, we'll restart your time. Thank you. I appreciate that. We want to make sure, Mr. Porter. Okay, this is about a book in the library and the... Isn't that why we're here? 
That's why we're here, and you need to focus your remarks on this specific book and this specific Okay, book. well, I have degrees, too. I'm, I'm an expert. Since, I, since everybody said they have a degree and they're an expert in it, I have degrees, too. I'm a former United States military veteran. Or I'm not a, a former veteran. I'm not dead yet. But I'm we're going to restart athlete. your time. If you could just please talk about the, the book. We're well, everybody's allowed to say their credentials, and I can't. Sir, please go ahead. Your time is, you have 34 seconds left. Well, no, my time is restarted. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. So as a veteran and someone who has a degree too, this is not good material. This is, this is por pornographic. This is indoctrination. It's sickening. And as an adult, yeah, as an adult, I, sometimes, you know, we make the right decisions, sometimes we don't. But it's my right to, as an adult, to say if I would want my kids to read this or not. It, it's, it's all by their own families, privately. It shouldn't be publicly funded. Just like abortions shouldn't be probably confronted, but that's not the case today. I'm just saying. And, oh, we're allowed to make ch ch chimes for the audience now, but I can't say anything on my time. Okay. This is, uh, I see what's going on. But anyway, your job is to protect and defend the children. Your job is to protect and defend the people. That's your oath. You swore an oath on the Bible and the United States Constitution when you're sworn in to be elected. So thank you. You did have 35 seconds remaining, just so you know. Okay, thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, everyone. My name is Josie Fickey, and I reside in Valrico here in Hillsborough County. As you've heard, you have broken several state laws with your demonstration in support of this book. But I'm here to remind you that you have also violated federal laws. And I'm calling on the parents today to report every one of you to the Attorney General and to the Board of Education here in, the, here in uh, Florida. I also want you to know that I do have the federal codes if you're interested in knowing what you're breaking here. Um, you have these books for children's education, as you say, to be all inclusive and including, but my question to you all is how many Bibles are in the classroom today, library or recommended, or on a recommended reading list by any of you? The Bible? to this day is easily the most read book in the world and that is for obvious reasons. It is estimated to have sold over 40 million copies in the last 60 years and that is proven. What is it that you fear that you cannot support it in a public school as on a reading list but you can support this nonsense? As educators and leaders your one job is to educate children on the functions they need to be productive citizens in this community across America. You have all failed and once again I'm here to remind you that you are breaking state laws and federal laws. Our mission as parents is to pursue charges and have those that stand removed as soon as possible. As the president of the Constitutional you, Super PAC speaker, I ensure you, you that will speaker, happen. Please. Thank you. And if we could please call up speakers 47 to 51. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bobby Ewing. I'm a substitute teacher here in Hillsborough County and an organizer with the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Today, as you all know, you're just set to discuss the book, This Book is Gay by Juno Dawson. And this has come about as a result of a campaign by right-wing operatives who have traveled here from around the country to try to intimidate school boards around the state to ban any books which make reference not only to LGBTQ identities, but also to the important history of the black liberation and civil rights struggles and any content they deem contrary to their far-right agenda. This context is vitally necessary to understand because this discussion about this book and this meeting is not happening in a vacuum. They're citing the law as the reason why you should ban this book. But you need to remember that segregation was also legal, lynching was legal, and slavery was legal. Throughout history, the law has been used as a weapon against progressive change, a weapon against black people, queer people, and working class people, and it continues to be used this way today as this meeting is demonstrating. The law exists to uphold exploitation and oppression, and as Martin Luther King Jr. said, we have a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Flebeau. Uh, it's good to see everyone has had coffee this morning. I am here to speak on This Book is Gay as well. I, having last week, have also spoken on these inappropriate books. 
I have a best friend for 42 years who's gay. My brother's mother is gay. This is not a heterosexual versus a homosexual versus a trans or a cis issue. This is, again, a legal issue in distributing pornography to our kids, period. And I would behoove anyone to say that protecting a child on all aspects and sides of this demograph these demographics doesn't entail not handing porn to children and following the law. I would also beg to say that everybody here is a law-abiding citizen who would not want to or knowingly distribute pornography to a child. I could be wrong. I would like to also encourage any one of you to take this book and hand it to one of my children in front of me because I promise you it would be distributing pornography to my child. So who is handing these books to these kids when they're checking them out in the media center? Is it the media specialist? So is it there where we have to start to find a way to get and protect all children? Trans, cis, homosexual, heterosexual, I don't care. They're still children under the age of 18. They are minors. This is illegal. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello. Hi, my name is Emmanuel Ramos. I'm with Turning Point USA. In a world where morality has become relative, I am speaking about the book, by the way. In a world where the where morality has become relative, it's no surprise that our children become a government experiment. Rather than provide an education, they are given an indoctrination. Our children become victims when adults become submissive. From a pandemic to gaslighting the innocence of children into convincing them that it's okay to give a book in a public tax-funded library that explicitly depicts pedophilia, pornography, and how to use gay sex apps, Imagine if you found yourself at a packed school board meeting questioning and demanding that the same government that approved the book in the schools be the government that takes it out. Here is a reminder that all our rights come from a power greater than ourselves. They come from God, not from a poorly elected group of absent-minded validation seekers who allowed a perversion at the hands of our youth, the pressure is on you, and the reminder that you're elected is on us. Thank you. Next speaker. And we, if we could have speakers 52 to 58, please line up. Hi, my name is Homera Afsal. Um, I'm here to thank you for following um, the democratic process here, for doing your job. Um, you were following the procedures as they are laid out in Hillsborough County Schools. Um, everybody who has spoken here today has spoken on the process, the evaluation for the evaluation of this book, because that's part of this process. So thank you for doing your job. Um, I support whatever decision you make um, regarding this book. And again, I ask that you do it because of the process. You make your decision based on what the Pierce Middle School Committee has said. Give that careful thought. Of course, give thought to what parents have said. But let's not have the decision based because of pressure from political theater. Um, I'm number 50. There's not a whole lot that left um, to be said. But um, when it comes to protecting children, there are an abundance, of, an abundance of other issues that actually do present a serious threat to the children of Hillsborough County. Gun violence, families who can't afford a place to live, hunger, climate change, access to health care, um, efforts to deny the humanity of L members of the LGBT community, whether they're Thank parents you. Thank or you very children much. or adults. Next speaker. Thank, you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, my name is Rachel. While this book can be controversial and some parents are not okay with their children reading it, the process the state requires has already occurred. Don't allow a group here to bully you. Two review committees have already voted to keep the book. It is not required reading or curriculum. It is self-selected. 
and a parent can tell their child and the librarian that they are not allowed to read it. The students reaching for This Book is Gay are doing so because they're questioning their sexuality and they want accurate information instead of getting incorrect information online because they may not have a safe space at home. The author clearly states to skip certain chapters if they're too young and issues warnings throughout. The argument that kids parents can just buy the book is not sufficient. 18% of children in Hillsborough County are living under the poverty line. School libraries are their only access to books. Ultimately, this meeting is about whether or not we're going to respect the qualified media specialists who dedicated their time to reviewing this book cautiously and honestly, respecting the school review committee and their decision and the district reviews committee decision. Please respect their decision made by three entities to keep this book don't let this become the stepping stone to removing many more. Otherwise, where are we going to draw the line? Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Carla Correa. I'm here to urge all of the school board members to honor the decision made by the Pierce Middle School Committee saying that the book should stay. Um, we need to protect our LGBTQ students. You know, we need to make sure that, you know, they have safe places to learn about what they need to learn about because you know, the outside, you know, the outside world doesn't always offer that. You know, as we can see here, there's a lot of, you know, there's a, there's people with a really hateful agenda here who, who don't want um, gay people to be able to exist or trans people to be able to exist freely. They want to send them back, back in the closet. But we, as a community, as a society, we have to make sure that we're not complicit in that, that we're not complicit in, in Ron DeSantis's plan to, to genocide trans people and gay people and to send them back. And, you know, this is, this is part of the larger attacks on, on workers, on, you know, black people, on immigrants. We want to make sure we just talk about the book, okay? And, and, that, and I think it's important that we realize that this isn't just about the book. This is part of a much larger agenda to, to divide workers and to, to, to make sure that this state is a, is a white supremacist, hateful state. Order. Okay, Mr. Porter. Again, this. Okay, excuse me, audience, please. Okay, again, don't want to interrupt your time. Stop. About the book. Focus your comments on the book. Okay, well, we need to make sure that this book is kept in schools and that no more books in Hillsborough County schools are banned, and we're not capitulating to Ron DeSantis's white supremacist agenda. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Next week, audience, please, and I see a few people. Can you please uh, be civil and, and please give the same audience, the, please give people the same respect that they gave you when you spoke. Please, excuse me, ma'am, please, or we, you will be removed. You need to please be quiet and let the remaining speaker speak. Thank you. I'm Debbie Hunt. Good. I don't know if it's morning or afternoon. I didn't look at the time. Um, in, this, in the book, This Book is Gay, there are references to two adult sex apps, Grindr and Scruff, which the author states are adult sex apps. However, if you look on the app program, they are not. They are 17 plus. Concern has been expressed about the vulnerability of students who may use these apps. We have had a situation in our own county. I have provided you with the article. One of our own elementary school principals was arrested in a sexting sting just last year. What shocked me is how he was caught communicating with what he thought was a 15-year-old student here in Hillsborough County. Thankfully, it was a deputy on the other end of the sexting. This serves as a very real warning to each of us about the hazards of having obscene information in our public schools. The situation could have turned out quite tragically. He was using the Scruffs Act, which was referenced on page 186. I understand this book was gay was supposedly brought in because a library media specialist was asked to. This is not about removing LGBTQ gay books. It's about removing obscenity from our public school libraries, our public school libraries. Would they, would a media specialist bring in Playboy or Hustler? Thank you. Asked? Next speaker. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Erin Wiley. I'm, I'm here to speak.
speak on this book is gay, there's a, a few things that I need to say. First of all, this is no more pornographic than the Jiminy Cricket cartoons that I was quite literally shown as a Hillsborough County School uh, student in elementary school. Um, there, uh, there is no pornographic element to this book, regardless. That that is is part of is part of the the issue here. But the biggest issue here with this book and the challenge has been that we have a process in place that works. That Pierce Middle School has told us is working. The committee has uh, decided unanimously what decision they want to have. However, we continue to have political theater with by people, as you have seen today in the room who tell you that this is about the children's safety when it comes to this book. If we were concerned about children's safety, they would not be challenge a, challenging a book that was not, in fact, even on the shelves at Pierce Middle School. What we know is there were two copies of that book, one that was checked out by an eighth grader and never returned, and one that was never there. This book was never on the shelves in the first place to have been an issue. This is political theater, and it needs to be stopped. We need to uphold the process that we have in place, which is working and working well. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Catherine Morris. I just want to first of all thank all of you for your hard work. I know that um, this, this political theater really has become very, very real for a lot of you, and it's very unfortunate that some of the ignorance and violence that I see that is being thrust upon you has been uh, taken a little too far. And the fact is that I do uphold the, the process. I appreciate the process that you have put in place, which is currently the law. And uh, I continue to allow or ask you to, to continue this process because uh, let's not pretend that this isn't a political uh, stunt. Uh, remember, we have a, a teacher, an art teacher in uh, Tallahassee that was just fired for showing Michelangelo's David. Um, you know, we have teachers that are afraid of getting their voting rights uh, taken away from them, as well as uh, their entire, uh, uh, you know, a possible felony being uh, thrusted upon them because of having their own personal libraries. This is a political stunt. Um, and the fact is that book banning, that is what this is, is happening. This is book banning. Uh, we can't be afraid to allow free thought, uh, to allow the conversations that some children may need to have, other children may not need to have. Um, but it is not our uh, duty to, to decide what are those conversations that need to be had. Um, you know, if, if you have a young child who's not being able to, to have those conversations at home, they need to have a safe space to do so. Um, I appreciate all the people who have read the book cover to cover um, that are not just trying to take snippets out of it and make it into a, a big uh, boogeyman scenario. So thank you, thank you so thank much you. for Next all of your speaker. efforts. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. Um, I'm here to speak about the book in question. My name is Sam. I'm 39 years old and I've lived in the Tampa Bay area for the last 15 years. I moved to the U.S. when I was 23 years old from India. Um, I realized I was a lesbian when I was probably between the ages of 13 and 16 years old. At that point, when I left India, I didn't even know that I could go to jail for up to 10 years for being gay in my own home country. Today, I have three master's degrees. I'm married to the love of my life and I'm a very successful professional. I bring this up because too often the only thing queerness is equated with is sex and pornography. Kind of sick and tired of that. I can't ignore the fact that the same people who always show up to oppose anything LGBTQ plus with isolated non-contextual examples of pornography are the same people that are for the most part here today. It's 2023 and we still can't talk about queer people without talking about sex. It's absolutely ridiculous. If the book was entitled, This Book is Gay, I don't know if its content would even be noticed. But that, that's the real problem here, but that's not even the most important thing. You've heard from students. That is the community that you should be focusing on. They want these books in their libraries because it helps them become who they are and understand who their peers and counterparts are becoming. The students are the important people here. Only their voice matters. Please listen to them. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello, my name is Jack Wallace and I'm an organizer uh, with the Party for Socialism and Liberation. Let's talk about this book. It's not pornographic or obscene. 
teaching children about being queer, is not grooming them, is supporting a child's identity. These book bans represent a larger attack on the institution of public education. The right-wing billionaires that fund Mom for Liberty and Turning Point USA fund all these bogus activists that come out to a place they don't live and try to get this book banned. These groups want to hit two birds with one stone, attack public education, and destroy its reputation so that it's more easily privatized, and to attack queer students. Those are the two birds. They're trying to hit it with one stone. The matter has already been decided locally. Do not capitulate to these racist and homophobic goons behind me, and because they do not represent the will, the will of the people. I also wanted to mention uh, that Carla Correa, one of the previous speakers, was actually just thrown out by the police for her comments here. Um, and I want to say shame on the, Pinellas, or the Hillsborough County School Board uh, for throwing this woman out who was just speaking her mind. Uh, she didn't do anything wrong. Um, she was actually just thrown out by the police department. Um, and, you know, I, if that's not a, a suppression of free speech, I'm not really sure what else that would be. Um, you know, manhandled her, really. Um, and so if you want to go outside and speak with her and maybe reprimand some of the officers or something, that would be much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you. And our final speaker for today. Hi, I'm Sarah Peacock. Um, Teaching about sexual orientation and gender identity doesn't teach children to be something. It teaches them that our world accepts them for who they already are. To remove this reassurance of acceptance is to create a hostile world that disempowers children in their most formative years. This is, at best, neglectful, <clears throat> and at worst, outright abusive. We would have no control over whether these children will be accepted by their parents and families, but we are absolutely responsible for the environment we create for students in the hundreds of hours each year that we care for them. I went to a Florida public middle school. My first peer got pregnant at 12 in the seventh grade. Sex education is more important than some parents' prudence. I'm glad human trafficking and sexual exploitation have been brought up so frequently because books like this give children the language to describe sexual abuse. It tells them that their boundaries deserve to be respected. If you don't want children to have the ability to recognize exploitation, I'm not sure why we should be listening to your opinion on anything at all. I'm grateful that we are able to re rely on the democratic process, even if Turning Point USA and other political operatives are trying to use our children for their own purposes. Thank you. And that will conclude our public comment. Um, and audience, before we get, begin, I please ask and request for everyone to be respectful as board members speak and as the superintendent, everyone speaks. If there is some disruption, you will be asked to leave. Thank you. Um, the following item will now be heard, C-101. 101, 101 discuss to the appeal of the district level decision regarding the reconsideration of the challenge material. This book is gay by Juno Dawson. Superintendent Davis will highlight this item. Yes, Mr. the Chair. I'm going to hand over to Mr. Porter first to be able to set the ground rules and uh, the expectations and then transition back to me. Okay, thank you, Superintendent, board members, and the, and the public. Um, today, again, as we said at the outset, you're here for one specific reason, the consideration of whether uh, the book, this book is gay, belongs in Pierce Middle School Library. It's important to understand that this is the only middle school in the county where this book is found. Uh, there is a process that was established by the district that has three levels. The first level, when a book is challenged, that it, it is heard by a committee based up of the, uh, the school community. That committee found that the book should remain in the library. The person then has a right to appeal that to a district level committee. That also, uh, that was held and the district level committee found that the book should remain. Now it's your job as elected school board members to determine whether the book in this particular library at Pierce should remain. You must be guided by Florida statutes and this is a time to focus on definitions and the meanings of words as they're found in Florida statutes. You have to apply your own um, intellect and your own analysis, but you must be governed by Florida statutes and the words in the statutes. There are two key statutes here that are important. At one, the first one is uh, section 1006.43D, and this has been provided to you. This is how materials are purchased by the district in the first place. And I'm going to take a minute to read them because this is important. Any materials purchased by the district pursuant to this section must be, number one, free of pornography and material prohibited under section 847.012. Number two, suited to student needs and their ability to comprehend the material presented. And number three, 
appropriate for the grade level and age group which the materials are used or made available. That's statute number one about the selection of the material. It refers you to section, eight, section 847, which has been referenced a lot today. And there are several elements of that section of the statutes that are important. Section 847.012, a person may not knowingly sell, rent, or loan for monetary consideration to a minor any book, pamphlet, magazine, printed material, however reproduced, or sound recording that contains any matter defined in section 847.001, explicit and detailed verbal descriptions or narrative accounts of sexual excitement or sexual conduct and, and and is a critical word here, and that is harmful to minors. I'm going to now read you what harmful to minors means because those are words that are used and thrown about, but they have specific meanings in Florida statutes. And it's important for you to hear those words and apply that language to this set of facts, which is this book. So Florida statutes defines harmful to minors as, harmful to minors means any reproduction, imitation, characterization, description, exhibition, presentation, or representation of whatever kind or form depicting nudity, sexual conduct, or sexual excitement when it, A, predominantly appeals to a prurient, shameful, or morbid interest, B, is patently offensive to prevailing standards in the adult community as a whole with respect to what is suitable material or conduct for minors, and C, taken as a whole, is without serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific uh, value for minors. Your first job is to determine whether this book is harmful to minors using that definition. If you find that it meets that definition, you should vote to remove the book. If you find that it doesn't meet that definition, you go to the next step, which is, is the book suited to student needs and their ability to comprehend the material presented? Or is the book appropriate for the grade level and age group for which the materials are used or made available? That's the standard by which you're reviewing this book today. Uh, that was a lot of information thrown at you. I pre uh, prepared that uh, memo to you earlier and showed that to you. I'm studying the groundwork. You're going to hear from the superintendent. You're going to hear from Mr. Gibson about the other two committees that were um, convened and held in, in their decision. And then we'll, we'll get back to it, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. But I'm going to ask you to focus on the law today and these definitions and what the defin definitions mean, and then apply your own analysis to that and to the set of facts before you today. Again, I can't say this enough. This is about a book at a middle school. That's the only thing up for discussion today. I've talked enough for now, and I'll, get, I'll talk again when it's time for you to make a decision. So I'll turn it back over to the superintendent. Yep. Through the chair, thank you so very much, Mr. Porter, for providing the insight of the purpose for today. And as Mr. Porter said, we, our job is related to be able to determine if this book is gay, should be available at Pierce Middle School. In addition, I'd like to mention that middle school ranges from the age of 11 years old, and it could go to 15, in, uh, 15 years of age as well. This book is gay is described as a self-help book geared toward young adults that navigate through the LGBTQ plus community on topics such as debunking uh, stereotypes, uh, biases for existing LGBTQ plus members, and at the same token, how to come out, where to meet individuals in the in community related to dating, early sex urges, and also safe sex practices. This, t this text centralizes the perspective of LGBTQ plus community by discussing the uh, cultural stigma at the same token by giving descriptions of sexual acts. This book is gay, uses infographics. It also uses illustrations and anecdotes to provide informational related concepts for self-awareness and also for self-interactions with the same-sex partners. This book goes on to look at the landscape of LGBTQ plus physical spaces, social life, along with sex. At this time, I'm going to transition to Mr. Gibson to really talk about the process that we put in place. Um, my personal opinion, this process has been um, measured, thoughtful, and transparent uh, within, our, uh, within our school district. 
And I want to say that our certified media specialists have continued to analyze the needs of our students, the teaching community, also supporting uh, re the reading needs in our curriculum within our schools, and also being able to consult with multiple resources to be able to select books within our, within our community, within our uh, libraries as well. And these individuals are trained professions, uh, professionals, and, and I appreciate their hard work every single day. But at this time, I'm going to transition to Mr. Gibson, who will then put it back to me for a final recommendation. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, uh, Mr. Davis. Um, following the end of the legislative session last year, um, at the superintendent's direction, the district completely overhauled its uh, review process, its procedure for the challenge of a, of a library media uh, and the process that it would go through. That, as, as Mr. Porter said, the first step in that review is uh, a challenge at the district level. Um, each one of our schools at the beginning of the school year uh, convenes an educational media materials committee. Uh, that committee then meets as needed throughout the year uh, to review any challenges that come through. Uh, at, at the beginning of this school year, two challenges to this book that we're here today uh, were brought to Pierce Middle School. Uh, the principal through the media specialist then convened the Educational Media Materials Committee uh, and they met. They're all required to read the entire book and, and then they meet um, to discuss. Uh, the, the committee determined that uh, this book was one that uh, brought about and discussed serious concepts for the um, LGBT community. Um, it identified it as an informational text uh, and it, in it the committee found, specifically found that it presented the material in a manner that was appropriate for the age of the students um, at the school. Uh, finally, the committee also noted that parents all, as always, maintain the right to limit uh, what their children have access to and what their children can um, take from the, the media center. Um, after that decision was made, uh, one of the two um, who had originally challenged the material filed for a district level uh, review. Uh, that requires a, a number of district level individuals as well as a PTA representative and um, uh, the union representatives met. They too were all required and asked to read the book um, in its whole. In the end, they voted um, eight to two uh, to maintain the book. One, one of the committee members um, thought that uh, it might be best to go back to the committee to give them some more information. Uh, that committee too uh, agreed that the overall intent of the book was to provide informational support to the LGBT community and specifically LGBTQ teens. Um, there was a discussion about uh, the, the statutes uh, that Mr. Porter has read about, um, legal opine that it did not believe that the, the uh, information was obscene or harmful to minors, but questioned and, and, and thought that perhaps it was not appropriate for the grade level and age group for which the materials are used or made available. That really was the key and, and is the key here, um, we believe. Um, in the end, uh, the members felt that this uh, book served as a nonfiction resource alternative to classmates discussion and more uh, particularly to as an alternative to what is out there on the internet. And so in the end, they voted to maintain that book here. Uh, thereafter, uh, that individual has challenged that and, and that's why we're here uh, as the final, final arbiter of, of this process. Thank you so very much, Mr. Gibson. And uh, as you've heard, this is today, this is about the legal requirements. Is it free uh, pornography under statutory 847-012, which is harmful to minors, minors? Is it suited for students and their needs? And there are, have, do they have the ability to comprehend the material being presented? And also, is it appropriate for grade level students and age appropriate which the materials are used and, and are made available within our schools? And I want to know, I, I want everyone to know, I appreciate the hard work of, of both committees and those who have been involved in this process. And uh, thank you for their time and their efforts and their energy. My effort as superintendent is to protect students and to make sure that students are exposed to appropriate material every single day. With this said, it is my recommendation as a review in this book, reading this book, reviewing chapter nine of this book and requirements that are statutory required, is my recommendation is to remove this book. This book is gay from all middle schools in Hillsborough County. Thank you, Superintendent Davis. I need a motion and a second to approve item C101. I have a motion by Member Gray. I have a second by Member Rendon. Okay, we will now begin discussion. Okay, speakers, we'll have five minutes, right? 
Okay, I just want to make sure if there's anything else. Okay, we'll go ahead and begin, uh, members. Uh, remember, we have five minutes, and then you're asked to get back into the queue. Um, Member Gray. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and I thank the audience uh, for their courage and their uh, their very uh, heartfelt, um, meaningful, in my mind, uh, comments as well. Um, I, uh, I come from a place um, in different areas, such as you all. Lenz is a, a grandmother of uh, two elementary kids, um, a um, board member that has had over three decades of teaching, inclusive is middle school. And last, a uh, school board member, of course, countywide. Well, not really last. I, I do have the Human Trafficking Committee formed three years uh, ago, and uh, we are very concentrated on what uh, does help our students stay out of the nefarious activities of human traffickers. Uh, and certainly uh, verbiage found in books, but more often in, on cell phones, social media, uh, contribute to an outlandish uh, spread and growth of human trafficking. Uh, make no mistake, uh, I know some of you said we're third metropolitan area. Tampa is number one metropolitan area in the uh, in the nation for a human trafficking situation to occur. Make no mistake, that's where my eyes are, uh, as, as every one of you with our little children um, who are growing up and not being aware, uh, and they should not. They're innocent and they're young, and I'd like to keep them that way, and I'm sure board members will agree. Uh, first off, when I look at the committee report, and I'll be very brief, uh, there are some uh, situations here that I see that is not congruent with uh, what seems to be in place uh, for this book to be on, in the library. Uh, it says it falls uh, within the age group, uh, and obviously that's on page nine. It does not. Eleven through fourteen, uh, school board. I mean, excuse me, children. Um, uh, 11, 12, 13, and 14, and 15 are not emotionally or socially ready to hear or, or read this type of material. Uh, the safety issue I mentioned, very heightened, desensitizing with words and verbiage that we see all too often. This is a new world we're living in. This is not the way it was when we went to school, baby boomers, and you know that. We're, we're looking at a, a great amount of nefarious, and I say that word twice, activities. That's the reality that our children are seeing and why expose them to more. This has nothing to do with the LGBTQ plus community in its own way as far as the book goes because they they have every right to have literature and expose the children to what is real or not real within their communities. Um, it also re relates to um, does, ex this is coming right from the report, Page nine, parents have the right to limit what their ch uh, their child can read. Yes, they have the right. Parents think of libraries, and this is going back to many years of my teaching, as safe havens. We go to the library, we send our kids to the library to have value in what they read, educational value. In my mind, if, <laughs> if we're having a teacher who wants a certain book, that's fine as long as there's educational value and the parents are, are part of that equation. Because why, how can you really teach effectively unless you have parental backing? Uh, but again, the reality is many parents are not aware of what their child is reading and more importantly, what is on their cell phone. And that is the tough part of all this. Um, I also noted in this committee report that <clears throat> Does sexual explicit material found in books, especially social media, replace the parent? Who's influencing the parents? I mean, do parents have the central role of influencing? Well, unfortunately, we'd like to think so. You're, the audience here is remarkably responsive to influencing their children. But the reality, again, is that is not the case in many, many uh, homes. And I'm, I hate to say that, but you all know that. You must know that. And so... It is our responsibility as a board and as a superintendent to do the best we can to protect your children, my, ch my grandkids, from materials that may elicit um, responses that we are not in favor of. Last, and, and Mr. Porter, yes, we do have to follow the law and uh, St Florida Statute 1006.403, 2 and 3, 
uh, it is not suited for student needs and their ability to comprehend too young. And uh, the third one, appropriate for grade level, age group. Obviously, that's factually true. Book publishers, authors, the recommendations are 14 and up, and there is a sexual application, and we don't want the students to start playing around with that. Thank you. Thank you, Member Gray. Member Hahn. Thank you, Member Combs. Um, you know, certainly, like Member Gray, I, I, I believe it's our responsibility to ensure that materials children have access to are not only age appropriate, but are of value. You know, we want children to read books that will broaden their knowledge and inspire their imagination and encourage them to think critically about the world around them. But today we have to ask ourselves, what's the purpose of a school library? Um, it, is it simply to provide students with books they desire, regardless of the content or the value of those books? Or is it to curate a collection of materials that will help our children grow into informed and thoughtful adults? And I believe it's the latter. Um, you know, while I understand many of my colleagues may argue that the book in question contains certain themes um, or messages that are important to students, I, I do urge us all to consider the, the book in its entirety and understand that there are plenty of books that exist that can be in our libraries that will um, provide a resource to children who are struggling around very diverse issues in our community. And they will provide appropriate, age-appropriate information and accurate information without resorting to including sexually explicit content. I, too, looked at um, what the committees wrote and, you know, um, in the book, it describes some sexual acts, and it says that you won't learn this in schools. But we are teaching certain sexual acts in schools through this book. I mean, librarians don't get to teach in school libraries what teachers can't teach in classrooms. And when we discuss the sex ed curriculum, it was really clear what we couldn't teach when we were talking about sex education. And so, you know, what's concerning to me and problematic is that the committees, and a lot of people spoke about the committees and what the decision they came to, what, what they did not take, it seems, into consideration is the age appropriateness of the book, um, as well as the highly sexual content. It's very explicit. I don't have to read it. People wrote, read it to you today. And even on our own website, it says it's for grades 10 to 12. And yet this is now in a library with 11 and 12 and 13 and maybe some 14 year olds that are in that, in that school. So, you know, and librarians, they use the reviews. We heard that a lot today too. And when I look at the reviews that we all have been given, it clearly states that it offers very frank information about sex. It's important for its frank sex talk, but it's not, it's far less inclusive than it aims to be. And that it has sex apps. And Member Graves spoke, um, you know, well about the dangers of highly explicit sexual information given to minors. And, you know, this, what we know also about this app is that even the author admits it's for adults, it's not children, and it encourages behavior that can put kids at risk. So, you know, we know that exposing kids to these apps at a young age, at any age, it puts adults at risk. But, you know, it puts children at risk because if they could, again, put themselves into situations that are dangerous to their minds and their bodies. And we need to consider that children's minds are still developing. Exposure to obscene or highly sexualized content may be traumatic or confusing them. And they may feel pressure to behave inappropriately, or they may develop unrealistic expecta expectations or engage in risky behaviors that they're not mature enough to understand. So it, it just it puts them at a lot of risk. I don't understand why that was lost when people were reviewing this book. There are, again, plenty of appropriate resources out there. I don't understand. Even somebody said, you know, wh why this book? You, 
The librarian was asked to find information for LGBTQ kids. This is the only book she could find that was a how-to on have, how to have sex. I can't believe that. I can't believe there are not more valuable books out there for that particular community to, to address children's needs and, and resources. Um, so I, I am very concerned, and I'll get back in the queue. Thank you, Member Hahn. Member Rendon? Thank you so much. You know, first of all, I want to thank um, everyone that came out to speak today. It is valuably important that um, all members of our community have the right to speak their opinions, to express how they feel about a topic, and we as a board need to understand and review all topics. Also, I want to make sure we understand that this is a public school where we are required students to have a public education, whether it's, I'm sorry, we do have an education. They can choose private school, home school, or our public education, but they are required to be in school. So we are requiring minors to be in our schools where we are housed. And that's where we're talking about today. We're not talking about what is right for a parent or not for a parent. That is decided within your home. But we are deciding is on whether a piece of material meets Florida statute and is allowed to be in a public setting open to minors. Superintendent Davis, may I clarify your recommendation? Could you clarify that again, please? Yes, ma'am. To the chair, my recommendation is to move This Book is Gay from all middle schools in Hillsborough County. Um, actually, th th let, let's be clear. Um, th this is only about Pierce today. That's that motion. That's too broad of a recommendation for what's been advertised. That's a discussion that could be had at a later date, and you certainly can make that recommendation. You could certainly do that. This is a, an appeal of a specific book at a specific school. So I'm going to ask the superintendent, with all due respect, and the board to focus on this book in this middle, in this middle school. That's a broader discussion. It can absolutely be had and absolutely could be decided on, just not today under the, under the um, because we're in an appeal process. So let me clarify that because in um, Hillsborough Public Schools, if I am at a different school than Pierce, I am allowed to request this book and it is exchanged by media specialists. Therefore, our public school library is one with various managers. That's correct. And but, but, but what's clear, again, I, I don't want the conversation to, this is, this is, a, a, this is an appeal. And it, it's a legal process. And the appeal is about this book and this school. You it, all have the right going there's forward. Nowhere, there's nowhere in that appeal process that speaks about one school. Well, th that's what this is. This is an appeal from Pierce about this book. And Pierce is the only school that has the book in it. It's, a, it's, it's sort of a moot point. Practically speaking, legally though, it matters. And so again, I would ask respectfully that you consider that broader ban or that broader um, conversation at a meeting where it's been properly advertised and but that's properly not, vetted. But you said that this is about the appeal. This is about the appeal and from the, peers. The process of the appeals, it does not reflect that this is only about one school. And it does say on our website that it is in two schools. Um, my understanding is it's only in Pierce Middle Schools. It might be in high schools. Yeah, through the, through the chair and to, to what Mr. Porter is speaking to, the appeal was for one middle school. This text is in one middle school only, and this text is also at uh, TBT as well, one high school. So the appeal process was for a middle school. I didn't mean to, to create, uh, you know, related to any confusion on it. My recommendation still stands related to removing it from every one of our schools related to the appeal. My recommendation is to remove it from Pierce Middle School at minimum today. And board members, remember, we do have a workshop scheduled for April 25th when we talk about process. We want to stick to just talking about this book at this school. Thank you. Patty, a member, a member Rendon, please continue. I'm going to say publicly with all due respect to this board, but within our current procedures that you want me to review, it does not reflect that this is a challenge about this school. It's a challenge about the book. There is no reference within this appeal. I don't need, I don't need a comment. I'm just in my, I have five minutes of my time 
that I'm making sure that aware when I read through the appeal process, it is appealing the book, not the school. So I'm going to make that comment. Now, as far as the other part goes, when we reference the law and the committees, I appreciate the fact that we have a process with our committees. However, when I look at the checklist in which the committees have reviewed this book and any other book that's challenged, there is no reference in this particular, um, what the committee reviewed and the committee comments that actually reads and refer references statue. What it references the purpose, the authenticity, the appropriateness, the nonfiction content. But in none of the questions does it give reference to any of the statutes in which we could possibly be discussing today. So Mr. Porter or Mr. Um, Davis, was this committee, either of the two committees, given copies of the statute that would reflect this book? I'm going to ask Mr. Gibson to opine on that. He was the attorney that dealt with the district level committee at least. Yes, um, we have created a, a legal sort of cheat sheet for the school-based committee, uh, laying out the statutes that we have referenced today. I also was a, a non-voting member of the district committee and was there, and we spoke about all the statutes that Mr. Porter has, has addressed here, so yes. Because nowhere in the procedures is the statute or stating that the statute was given to the committee, so you're verifying that the committee had all the statutes of reference. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am because none of the questions refer to that. So when we talk about what the board has, we've got the ability to overturn it. I'm going to refer back to our statute that we have as a school board. The school board has a constitutional duty and responsibility to select and provide adequate instructional materials for all students in accordance with the requirements of this part. The district school board has the following specific duties. Each district school board is responsible for the content of all instructional material and other materials used in a classroom, made available in a school library, or included on a reading list, whether adopted or purchased from a state adopted instructional materials list, adopted or purchased through a school instructional material program, under or otherwise purchased or made available. Each district school board shall maintain on its website a current list of instructional materials. Also, statute 8470011, adult means a person 18 years of age or older. Subsection six, harmful to minors, means any reproduction, imitation, characterization, characterization description, exhibition, presentation, representation of whatever kind of form depicting nudity, sexual content, or sexual excitement when it when it is potential I'm sorry it's patently upset offensive or prevailing standards in the adult community as as a whole with respect to what is suitable material or conduct for minors taken as a whole is without serious literacy um, literary artistic political or scientific value to minors. Thank you, I'll get back in the queue. Thank you, Member Rendon. Member Perez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, Superintendent, let me, I'm just gonna ask you a couple of questions. How does this, how does the Parental Bill of Rights impact the district's policy on book challenges? Just from the Chair, the, the, the Parent Bill of Rights just gives access to parents for everything that, um, that we are exposing children to related to classrooms, classroom libraries, and in our media centers as well. So it gives them the ability to select and, and, and review content, also to be aware, to familiarize themselves with any content that we are implementing within our school district. And then hopefully through this process, we were required to create a process for parents to be able to challenge, and this is where we are today. So they have all rights and access to all of our content to, to it that we adopt from Tier 1, also related to anything we have from, uh, from our media special, uh, classroom libraries and media centers as well. Because I noticed that two, the two complaints came from two parents, one that lives 10.8 miles away or 20 minutes from the school, and another one who lives 29 miles away, 40 minutes from the school. Have we had any parents who challenged this book from Pierce Middle School? 
through the chair, there was there was no parent at Pierce Middle School that has challenged this book to date. All right. And do you trust the staff that you have in place to follow policy and procedure in our district with fidelity? All through the chair, all of our staff have been trained. Uh, we had a recent training on January 13th that was uh, provided from guidance from the Department of Education. They're all trained to be able to select text. We, uh, one thing I will say that our, our team and our media specialists continue to do, they start out at, at the beginning of the year and they have a plan that goes through every section on a monthly basis of their media center to be able to select text, remove text, add text in that process. And we're gonna continue to follow statutory requirements. And uh, I also trust that they are professionals. But at the same time, we wanna make certain that there is a process in place that we follow in order to make informed decisions. And how many books um, of these, this book, It's Gay, do we have in this district, in our schools? Through the chair, I think it's only a handful. We have... Uh, I'm specifically speaking to Pierce Middle. Oh, there are, are two. One has been checked out, and the other one cannot be located. Okay. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you, Member Perez. Member Vaughn? Thank you. Ooh, that is very loud. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have some questions as well. Um, first, I did speak to the librarian and spoke to as many committee members about this book as I could get in touch with to understand their rationale behind the way that they voted. Um, to Member um, Han's point, um, she said that her and the student sat down together and they identified books where the student felt um, that there was a need in order to feel safe or to have safe to have safe information. Oh, is it not on? Okay, it's like too loud. Somebody lowered it. Um, that there was a need. So she made this decision, sitting down with the student, looking over separate books, and having a conversation of why the student felt that this was necessary in the schools. Um, I also spoke with people on the committee, on the district committee, of there were two dissenting votes. I spoke with one of why they dissented and what was the reason behind it. Um, and the reason that they gave me was the fact that there is a, a list that the, the school district committee fills out um, and that they members of that school district committee did not complete the survey completely, that there were parts that were were left blank, especially when it came to age appropriateness, and that without the school committee answering that in completion, they felt that they were unable to really make that recommendation. So as part of the process, one thing that I would urge is anyone who's on the committee and who is an answering these surveys is to fully complete them so that we have all of that decision to make, a, you know, all of that information to make a decision. Um, I spoke to students, I spoke to members of the community, um, I spoke actually actually to a lawyer that uh, specialized in pornography cases um, around the country to get feedback on what is considered pornography and what does that look like. Um, one, remind me, do we in Florida offer sex education in sixth grade? The chair, we do not. Okay. So what grade does it start Sorry, in? Through, through the chair. Florida, through the chair, Florida does, but in Hillsborough County, we offer it in seventh grade. But in Florida, yes, where, which guides our statutes the entire state, Yes, ma'am. they do offer sex education in sixth grade per the statute. That has not been changed yet. That is not. Okay. Um, as I just want to clarify that. Um, number two, um, or whatever number I'm on, I'm really taking to heart the process that you laid out for us. Um, do I think this book is harmful, right? That's what we have to look at. You, you asked us to really evaluate two steps of it. No, I've read this book entirely, in, in its entirety. Um, in every step, even the parts where people have read things that for some people might be considered absolutely uh, inappropriate, the author has made a point to say, I am sharing this information so you can make as safe a decision as possible. These things are dangerous. When we talk about a dating app, they go through making sure, number one, never reveal your name or information or age publicly. Make sure that anybody that you're meeting is in a safe place with people that you trust. Every step of the way, the author has gone into great detail to make sure that they're trying to make safe any information that our students might stumble upon, 
without any prior knowledge to it. So they've definitely put into this book an effort to make sure that they're keeping our students safe. The information around the sex education that many people find uncomfortable is, again, geared to make sure that students, if they're engaging in things, are doing it safely, right? Which is the whole point of sex education, that there's no irreparable damage that could be done, and making sure, again, that safety is at the forefront. They've talked about monogamy being important. They talk about abstinence in the book. If you had read the entire book, you would see where they talk about abstinence. The whole thing is presented as an enhancement to a sex education guide for our LGBTQ plus community to make them safe, to keep them safe. Everything in the book. And when I look at our media, our purpose of our media, um, media center from our own district website, um, it says to ensure all students and facility at Hillsborough are provided with the best resources for 21st century learning. The media center collections include diverse materials that enrich the curriculum and of all programs. So enrichment, it doesn't talk about mirroring, it doesn't talk about being the actual curriculum, it talks about enrichment. Um, my question is, can parents opt out of this? Can they have a list at the beginning that they provide with the librarian to make sure their students don't have access to this? Yes? No? Anyone? I'm asking a question. Yes, Can you stop my time Sorry. while I get this answer, Sorry. please? Th through the chair, right now, the, um, there is not a process for opting out. We're in the, we are in the process of looking at all of our procedures um, within, within our um, media center. Kim, anything you want to add? Thank you. Yes. Through the chair. Um, I would just like to add that Parents are always welcome to reach out to media specialists. So media specialists are, are a teacher and a librarian at our school sites. And that parents who have concerns about what media or, or items that their student might be consuming, if they reach out to the media specialists and have conversations about it, media specialists are there to support them, to support their family's values and ideals and help make recommendations that might better align with their family's ideals. So there isn't an automated process. Our libraries are also run by substitutes and by volunteers. And so it is important that students are a part of that conversation and understand what their family's values and ideals are. So as they move through that space, they can represent that. And media specialists are there to support them in that process. OK, thank you. My time is up. I'll get back at the queue because I have a lot more to say. But I just don't understand why we aren't talking about a process where the media specialist can, like an R rating, put a label on this book where if a student tries to check it out, they contact the parent and get parent permission and move forward when we talk about parental rights. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you, Member Vaughn. Member Washington. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to be short and brief. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out because you do have an opinion and, and how you feel. Oh, and I respect each and every one of you for your uh, your concerns, I really do. But this time, I'm going to uh, I'm going to concur with the superintendent with your recommendation, superintendent. Uh, being a former administrator, I understand you have to make tough decisions, and uh, I had to make it when I was a, a principal. Tough decisions, so I'm going to concur with you, superintendent, for your recommendation, and I won't be back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you, Member Washington, um, and thank you, Member Vaughn. This is something that I've been really thinking about as well. When we talk about parents' rights, I want to make sure that parents who are across the district are not making a decision for my child in my school. So when we talk about parents' rights, we have to talk about each individual parent and what their rights are. For me, this is not political. It's not about the LGBTQ. It's not about banning. And I will say, the kids who came here today were such powerful speakers. You know, in the past, last week, we had buses transporting people from even outside the district coming here, right? We had, we had a very organized meeting. And I'm glad to see that we're finally having some balance and having finally some people speaking. Um, I have spent hours weeks reflecting on this. I have read every comment. I had some of the same questions why some of the, um, from the initial committee, why it was left blank, some of the questions. Um, 
I, I read the book, I've been reflecting, and I've been thinking. And I think it's very important, you know, as Americans, we make sure our own independent views and beliefs are left alone, and our parents have those choices. As just like I don't want one side to encrypt their decisions, I don't want the other side to also let me know how to raise my children and how to have my children. For me, I really respect the lens of the committee Looking at it from each level, I respect everyone, and I am really looking at it legally. I have to look at this legally and what's right. And what's very clear, and when people come in, this has been very clear by legal that this is not pornography. So my question, and one and two prong are legal. Number three, is it age appropriate? That is the concern. My concern, is it age appropriate for this book to be in, in a middle school? Uh, Pierce Middle School is one of my schools in District 1. You know, I've been there. Um, I was a middle school teacher for many, many years. Um, and even having my own children growing up, because I chose what I wanted my own children to grow up. So what I did was I looked and I looked at various websites, what the recommendation was for those books. I looked, I, I honestly spent hours and hours. And everything I saw, honestly, said the book was really rated for 14 and above. Um, that's why I think it's only in one middle school. It's not in multiple middle schools because it really is recommended. And I can't, I know that that seventh grader and eighth grader might want to read that book, but I have to look at the lowest child going in, a sixth grade student. And it reminded me of when I have my tutoring center and a young girl who went into Pierce Middle School as sixth grade, and she was a very young sixth grader. So I have to think to myself, is it appropriate? Now, I will say when I read the book, if you open up the book, and I really think it was the intent of the author, very beginning on page two of the book, it says, when I was in high school, there's no way a book like this would be made to me. But what, what if it had? It doesn't say middle school. It says high school. As you go further into the book, and it has quotes from different people and different people in the LGBT community, community it talks about people, the youngest child there quoted is a 16-year-old. I do believe the intent of the author was to have this as a high school book. The person who came in to challenge the book said, I don't have a problem with this in high school. So if there is a book at Pierce, it should be donated to a high school if a high school student wants it. This, I don't believe legally, based on legal and based on what I've read from the author, based on my research of the author, and based on my information, I also think this is not appropriate for a sixth grader. And so I, I also will support um, Superintendent Davis's recommendation for that. Meaning just the school. For just Pierce Middle School, only Pierce Middle School. And I want to make it clear that the person who challenged this book you know, the person who challenged this book also said they didn't have a problem with the high school. I just really, it's sad to me that people talk about parents' rights, but it depends what right they want. So let's make it clear, please don't tell me how to raise my children, and I'm not going to tell you how to raise yours. Thank you. Member Rendon? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to make sure that we understand that when we come to here as a board that um, we're not making a decision for all parents. I mean, we're not making a decision for just our child or just your child. We are making it for all children. And so as a parent, there are things that all of us on this board are going to differ on at the end of the day. My best friend and I differ on different things. My husband and I may differ on different parental, parental styles. We come together as a unit and make a decision but you don't always agree on how you're going to raise your child. So when we sit here as a board, we can only go by the statutes in Florida. If we don't like the statutes, then that is to the legislator to make those decisions. But we have to look at what decisions we make are based in statute. And so I go back to the statutes that we have in question, which are 1006.40, Section 3D, any materials purchased pursuant to this section must be free of pornography and materials prohibited under 847.012, appropriate for the grade level and age group of which the materials are used or made available. 
Each district school board is responsible for the content of all materials used in a classroom or otherwise made available to students. Each district school board shall adopt rules and each district school superintendent shall implement procedures. Let me make it very clear, and I apologize to the LBGT community, that because this book is the one in question, it brings a lifestyle to question. However, that is not where our judgment can lie. It cannot lie on whether it is a specific type of relationship. That's not our job. It is not my job to judge any individual family or person for their rights or their beliefs. But it is my job to ask if the content of that book violates state statute. And I apologize that in this particular book, it addresses a particular community. And that is not what I believe we have the right to discuss. We have the right to discuss and make a judgment on the statute based upon the content, not the individual community that it happens to have the content address. I'll be honest with you. If this was reversed and it was a content about Tinder and looking at a relationship for my 15 year old and telling her where she can find heterosexual partners in her community, I would be just as upset about that content as I would be about this because it's not about the community. It's about the content and how harmful it is to minor children, children that we have been put in the possession of protecting and to looking for whatever we're presenting to that child. So again, I'm going to reference statute 847.012. And when I look at that, the, we must think the use of this section knowingly means having the general knowledge of reason to know or belief or ground for belief, which warrants further inspection or injury of both one age of the minor two any pictures photograph drawing sculpture motion picture film video cassette or similar visual representation or image of a person or portion of a human body that depicts nudity or sexual content sexual excitement sexual battery bestiality sadomasochistic abuse which is harmful to minors or any book, pamphlet, magazine, printed matter, however reproduced or sound recording that contains any matter defined in 847.001, <clears throat> explicit or detailed verbal description or narrative accounts of sexual excitement or sexual conduct that is harmful to minors. So again, I apologize to one particular community because that is the book in question but we are not making a judgment on a community, but whether or not the contact of the book violates state statute. So superintendent, I am in recommendation of your, I mean, in favor of your recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, member Rendon, member Perez. Thank you. Um, you know, as a, as a member of this, of this board, I did make a conscientious effort to read this entire book. And then also I reached out to um, the members who did, um, you know, oversee this, um, the review of this book. And I also reached out to a few families, not only in Florida, but across the nation, and asked their opinion about this book. And one of those families was my daughter who resides in New York, and she and her wife gave me their opinion about this book. Um, the problem I have um, with this is the issue of the sex apps with this book. Um, I um, am the chair of, this, of the Cyber Task Force, along with um, um, teaching for the culture, who facilitate in educating parents regarding um, the sex apps like um, Yobo, um, Meet Me, Badu, and Gas 
that have caused significant harm to our children with our, within our own community. And someone mentioned about um, you know older um, um, the older people in the community picking up young younger um, members of the community through through the app. Um, let me get this. Um, I think it was Grinder, and there was a, also a report nobody mentioned that a New York deacon. Um, got 16 years from enticing members um, of minors through Grinder. So even in the religious, um, under the religious umbrella, we're finding that um, minors are being enticed under these um, sex apps. Um, and so for me, I know it's one book, um, and you, you know. I feel that it, and the, and the students that came to speak were students um, in the high school, um, of the, the high school age, which the book says is appropriate for, for their age range. And I think at, at that time they can make those decisions and they have the, the maturity to make um, good decisions. And so I too will be supporting your um, recommendation. Thank you, Member Gray. Thank you, Member Press. Member Gray. Uh, very brief, um, and you could believe that. First, I support the superintendent's recommendation. Second, I do uh, keep, I have kept in mind that book banning uh, is a very serious subject because as uh, Marikuchi, uh, that's a uh, Japanese author, said, if you only read books that everyone else is reading, you can only think what everyone else is thinking. We've got to remember that. So let's have a cautionary uh, reflection on going it carried away on the book banning. So I'm glad that you all pointed that out because I'm not going to forget it either as an individual board member. Secondly, as M Member Rendon and the other board members uh, stated correctly, we have Florida statues that we must follow, um, and that's the bottom line. So um, under the law 1006.40 and 2 and 3, um, it definitely is applicable. And uh, so again, Superintendent Davis, I, um, as an individual board member, I support your recommendation. Thank you, Member Gray. Member Vaughn. Thank you. Um, so. We keep referencing a statute, um, and as Member Rendon has, first of all, thank you, Member Rendon, for addressing the LGBTQ plus community and making sure that you're letting them know this isn't an attack on that community. It's really important that elected officials at this time are being clear about that as our communities are under attack, so I appreciate that. Um, secondly, when we talk about the statute from the way that you've explained it to me, everything that our board members have said is true. And then we get to the end where it talks about as long as these books don't have any political, educational, what was the exact wording of the value when we get to the end? So th th again, there are several statutes at play. This is, I think you're referring to the harmful minors definition, and that's um, under section 847.001, subsection 7C, taken as a whole. And that, that is an important part because as many of you board members have pointed out, it's the whole that matters, not excerpts. Taken as a whole is without serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value for minors. Okay. Thank you. And so, you know, again, what this comes down to is, is this harmful for students? I know that we've had a lot of conversation about is it making an app available for students that makes them liable to predators? And that's something that's very serious, and I appreciate a conversation about that as a board. However, again, reading this book, the way that I interpret it is they're trying to protect students or children who would learn about this app to use it safely, not to be vulnerable for people who would prey on them. So 
I don't think it's harmful in that respect. Um, I also think that when we value harmful or we talk about harmful, we have to talk about, again, the statistics against our LGBTQ population, which are 40% of them, if not more, that's, you know, documented, attempt suicide at some point. You know, when we have continual rhetoric that comes out that tells a certain demographic that they're not valuable, that they're sinners, that they're monsters, that they're going to hell, that they're abomination, that their rights aren't valid, that we can't discuss their lifestyles in schools. People respond to that. When you tell someone they're a monster, they end up doing awful things because that stigma is around them. So we have materials in our library that destigmatizes them and helps them to navigate a lifestyle that is under attack safely. I don't think it's a harmful to have in our schools. Now, it does come down to age appropriateness. Um, And again, since sex education starts at sixth grade, I'm on the fence about age appropriateness. However, I don't think the sex education would detail some of the things that that this details. I do think that some of these, although I think that they're important to protect our community, might be more valuable and easily comprehended at an older at an older level. Um, many speakers have asked me, "Is this something that I would expose my own child to?" And I have been very protective about what I expose my child to, and social media, and all sorts of access when it comes to information. Um, and I do worry that you know, if a sixth grader found this without any guidance, you know, that it could be confusing and it won't be as effective as it could be at a later date. So I am not. A against this book being in our in our schools by any means I'm not against even older kids using this because I think it's very important where I do wonder if it's the best decision for this school specifically is age appropriateness and that's where I'm on the fence when it comes to whether we should keep this book at Pierce Middle School I don't like the process of going against committees in general and voting against our committees we trust them we put them there for a reason I don't want to see this as a gateway to saying that those committees are important or that if we decide not to take their recommendation that that process should be eroded in any way shape or form those committees the information they gave me talking to committees is where I was able to get to the stance where I am today so I want to be clear that I think that the process that we have in place is important and that we should keep that in place because I know there was some talk at some point about whether the superintendent can call a meeting or you know overstep those committees and I want to be clear that even if I feel that this book isn't necessarily the best fit where sixth graders can access it so that they could use it in the best way does not mean that I don't think that this book should be in our schools or that I want to in any way take away from the process that we have I think it's important Um, the other thing that I'm concerned about is um, I would like to revisit and you know we've talked about this several times a process where as opposed to just removing books we do put it in where if parents do want their children to have access to this I might not think this is appropriate for my 11 year old but somebody else might and all we do is talk about parental rights and parental choices to be able to make this where if instead of removing things from school we have a process where if there's a book that's been flagged like this similar to an R rating if a child wants to check it out we contact the parent and if the parent gives permission it's available I don't think it has to be removed completely or left in schools there can be somewhere in between like R ratings where parents have that choice and that's in the vein of parental rights um, so I think I've covered every everything that I have in making this decision. Um, my time is almost up, so I will allow Dr. Hahn her time. Thank you, Member Hahn. Thank you, Member Combs. So I, I think we've all been really clear here that the theme of the book uh, around a particular community, the LGBTQ community, is not in question here. We understand children within that community need to see themselves in books and understand themselves in books. I think r- the real question is the content of this particular book. And, you know, um, however, the, you know, it, is it developmentally appropriate um, for minors? And, you know, however, the right to education, however, we have, what, I'm sorry, but you know, we have different methods of educating our children in schools. And we do it through books, we do it through lectures, we do it through lessons, and a lot of that is guided through state law or mandates or the DOE. But for us to have a book that is so sexually explicit in the hands of children, of minors, 
that is what is upsetting to me and concerning to me. Um, you know, we have a responsibility to ensure that the materials in our public libraries and in our schools are appropriate for our students. And so, you know, I am going to support the removal of the, of the book from Pierce Middle School. It is concerning that, you know, this book was chosen. I guess it goes back to my question, uh, you know, what is the purpose of a school library? Is it to have a, chi a, a book that a child wants to read no matter what the content is? And, you know, no, it's not. It's to have books of value that, you know, also, as we've talked a lot about, also adhering to the laws around that. Um, you know, I know that some students are going to be disappointed or upset if this book is removed or uh, during this challenge, but I do want to encourage them to discuss that with their parents. Um, I also want to reassure them that there are lots of other materials and books in our libraries that are educational and inspiring and engaging for them to read. I'm looking forward to the workshop. Uh, I want to remind folks we are going to have a workshop. I requested the workshop back in December. Unfortunately, it's been pushed to April. Um, you know, I would love to even see a special called workshop before that so we can discuss the process, some of our concerns around the process. Um, the laws in more depth, um, you know, because I, I think that um, it's important to how we operate as a board, how we work together, and what our expectations are from our superintendent and our staff as we move forward. So, you know, I, I hope that my hope is we can work together um, and ensure that our children in our schools have access to materials that will truly enrich their minds and their lives. Thank you. Thank you, Member Hahn. And, and I'm just going to conclude with a, a couple things. Um, I also agree with Member Vaughn. I, I think the process is really good. This is our first challenge, and we're going to learn how to speed, to go faster through. We only have one other challenge. So when you, when you sit here and watch board meetings and you think we have hundreds of challenges, we don't. There's only one other challenge. We want to make sure um, that this has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with sexuality. It has only thing has to do, is that content appropriate for the youngest child at that school, as everyone has said. And um, as we move towards April 25th, board members, and I just want to say we did move that workshop up because we were scheduled so far out. So we did move it up a couple weeks um, from the end. Of, it was later, and then we moved it up a few weeks. We switched out a couple workshops. Um, but at the end of the day, I board members, please take time because we really want to think about the parents' rights and the children's rights at the school as well. So it's really important for us to think we can't allow one group to dictate what books are across our schools, across our district. We want to make sure when we talk about parent choice, we're talking about the parents in the school, the parents who want their children to read that. So I can understand why the committee would look at it in a different perspective. But for me, as I said, when I look at this book, I think the author intended it to be a high school book. When I look at every single review, every review I've read, and I spent, I mean, too many hours, Everything I've read was for 14 and up, so I am also going to support the superintendent. And at this time, board members, please vote. And Mr. Porter, I don't know if you want to clarify the vote. What exactly? And just to be, be clear on the voting. record, the superintendent made a recommendation that this be not in any middle schools. My recommendation is that it be limited to Pierce. The board can. The superintendent has a right to make a recommendation. You have the right to vote as you please. Safe, you're on safer legal grounds given the posture of today's meeting. If you limit this decision to Pierce and talk about the broader issue in the future. Okay. So, so my question is, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, my, my recommendation. Are, are we able be, to make a motion for it to be just at Pierce? Yes, you are. Okay. So I don't know if anybody. That's the safer legal ground. Again, I don't want to step on the superintendent's toes, but uh, yes. Well, that's fine. Right, unless you wanted to re revise your recommendation. I do not. Okay. Uh, again, I just want to understand what everyone, the board and everyone to understand. Your, the posture of this meeting today was a, an appeal from two lower committees. The first decision was at a specific school, Pierce. It wasn't a district wide, it didn't start at the district, it's ending with the school board. Again, I'm telling you what's, the, in my opinion, the safest route to take legally in anticipation of challenges coming. And the posture of how this was noticed and advertised and what you're considering today is to limit it to Pierce with the understanding that you have the absolute right to take further direction in the future. We can change these procedures. We can change the policy. 
But my advice to you today is to limit this to Pierce. And I would re respectfully ask that the motion be revised to limit this to Pierce. Okay. I mean, uh, I don't know if somebody wants to make a, the motion. If not, I'm happy to make the motion. Okay, you passed the gavel, so you can make the motion. Yes, I have. Um, Madam Chair, I mean, I'm up for speaking. I would like to make a motion that we move that this book be removed from all middle schools in Hillsborough County. Again, you have the right to make that if someone yeah. wants to second it. But there's already somebody talking about a motion. Am I right, Mr. No, Porter? you said, can we make a motion? And I am. Yeah, I, she, that's fine. So the, that, that's a recommendation on the floor. There's no need to make a motion. If someone wanted to make a substitute motion, that's fine. You have an absolute right to make that. So what is the motion on the floor? The motion on the floor is the superintendent's recommendation, which is to not allow this book as gay in any middle school in Hillsborough County. That's the recommendation of the superintendent. And that's the motion on the floor. There's no need for you to make another motion if that's the intent. Okay. You had clarified earlier that it wasn't. I had asked that there be clarified because I had understood the recommendation would be limited to Pierce. The superintendent went broader than was noticed today. That's the motion on the floor. You're, you're, you're free to vote on that. Understand there's a risk involved with that. I'm going to hand the gavel if we clarified that. Mr. Uh, superintendent Davis, why don't you clarify that real quickly? Yes, ma'am. And, and through this part, I think Mr. Porter is doing his due diligence to make certain that he, he protects the, a process. Uh, this original process was coming to remove this text from Pierce only. Uh, legal did give all the statutory requirement, which is identified in the packet given to you through minutes. My recommendation openly was to remove the books from this book, this t book from all middle schools. It's the board's decision whether or not you want to make a different motion and only link that to Pierce. It is only in Pierce Middle School at this particular time, but my recommendation was to continue to remove it from all middle schools in Hillsborough County. Okay, and I'd like to make a motion. So you would be making a substitute motion. I'd like to make a substitute motion that this book re be removed from Pierce Middle School only. That requires a second. Okay, there's a second. So you need to vote on the substitute motion first, which is to limit it to Pierce. Okay, so please vote yes if you would like to limit it to Pierce, and if you want it to expand it to other middle schools, then you would vote no. Please vote when your lights appear. I, I, I need some clarification. I'm sorry. So, oops, sorry. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so if you vote to only remove it from Pierce, and it passes, but you want to remove it from I want to remove it from it. So you know what I'm trying to say? I, I, and like that's now, why you're caught, now we're kind of caught because caught if you want to remove it from Pierce only. Th th this is about the, the only thing, the only issue now with why I'm speaking is about timing and process, not about the substance and not about your powers or the superintendent's powers. I'm viewing this as a, there was a process created for a book challenge based on a school. It went through the process based on a school. From a legal p perspective, that's the safest, most conservative route to take. You have the power to go broader. In my opinion, that wasn't before you today, and it isn't right for a decision. Could be in the future. You've heard my say, and you've heard his recommendation. You can vote as you like, understanding there's, there's a risk. It's not a great risk that someone will challenge this decision because you went broader than was anticipated. That's so the after risk. After a motion, member Combs made a motion, member Vaughn seconded it. Why are we going right to a vote and not discussion? The substitute motion? And yeah. you, can, you can discuss that, absolutely. You can discuss but we weren't the given that opportunity. Okay, well then that's right fair. If you want to discuss the substitute motion, you absolutely can. So, you know, I just, you know, it's kind of an odd yeah. process. Again, I want to be clear, I, I, this is about um, this is about timing and process, not about powers and decision making. I know, that's my, but I want to be really clear before it, I and vote. In, in other, it, factually speaking, it's sort of a moot point because it's not in any other middle schools in the district. It's only in Pierce. Right. So, yeah. so, we can order it so, okay. So I just want this really clear. So I, I knew coming in we were voting for this book to remove, be removed from Pierce. And I've been obviously on the record now saying, yes, I'm supporting that book remo being removed from Pierce. Um, now it's opened up to all middle schools. So if I vote no on removing it from Pierce, but yet I want to vote yes on him his uh, recommendation and it gets voted down, which based on the, the board seems... So then now I'm voting to have it not removed at all. You know, like it's just like. Correct. So I am going to vote to remove it from Pierce. 
I would like to see it removed from all middle schools because based on what we all said today, we don't think it should even be in any middle school. So what, but I understand the legalities around that. Yeah, I don't what I would to suggest is, I'm yeah, I don't mean to interrupt. I think that's the, <laughs> the absolute appropriate topic for April 25th. <laughs> I understand that. I just want to go on the record that I don't understand if you think it's wrong to I, for children of that age, why we wouldn't want to. But I'm going to preserve my voice and around the book being removed from Pierce and support the book to be removed from Pierce. However, I don't think it's appropriate for any middle school child. So I just want it to be clear because it's, it's going to get very confusing um, for some who haven't just sat through hours and hours of discussion around this. So, you know, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. As up, I, I, the board can discuss it if you like. I mean, okay. it's I, okay. I, I think I think we can vote if we just want to make no, it. No, no, because I'm not, to, go ahead and discuss. Member Rendon, go ahead. We, we, we start okay, with let's. One, we'll, we'll, we have okay. the right for everyone. Okay, we're gonna continue. Go ahead, Member Rendon. At the end of the day, when I wanted to make a motion to vote to remove this from the entire middle school, you told me I didn't have to because a motion was on the table. Now, all of a sudden, when another member wants a secondary motion, we never voted on the first one that I wanted to make. Therefore, we're in violation of Robert's rules. I don't understand. She made a substitute motion. She made a substitute motion that was seconded. If you're in favor of that substitute motion, you should vote yes. If you're against it, you should vote no. And the, the original motion stands. But let me clarify. If we vote to only have it in Pierce Middle School, does that supersede our motion that was on the table before, or do we come back to my original motion? No, you do not motion? come back. The substitute motion then takes precedence, and that's what you vote on, and that's what stands. Unless it fails. Unless it fails, and then you go back to the main motion. So if you, again, and I apologize for the board being in this position, but this is where you are. So there's a substitute motion that was seconded. If you're not in favor of that, you should vote no and go back to the main motion, which is to not have it in any middle school. So... Let me make it clarify so I understand that I'm going to make it because I find it common sense would tell you that if I find it inappropriate for a school, a middle school, I'm going to find it inappropriate for all middle schoolers because all middle schools should be able to be under Florida statute. So I want to make it very clear that I tried to have a motion, but I didn't, wasn't allowed to even get a second to even go to a vote to have it removed in all middle schools. So I want to know that I'm going to vote against Pierce Middle School because if I vote for it to stay in Pierce Middle School and I lose, I don't get to vote to have it removed. And I want it publicly note that I want it removed from all middle schools in Hillsborough County. And, and through the chair, if if let me say this, I say it again. Jim's doing an awesome job. If I get to a point where my recommendation is voted down, I'll make a additional recommendation. That's not the posture of the board right now. The, the, it, the motion on the floor is a substitute motion to limit this to Pierce. Are there any co other comments? Would anybody else like to speak about that? Okay, Member Vaughn, and then after that we'll vote. Easy. Thank you. So just to clarify Robert's rule of, of order. The motion coming from the superintendent, that was the main motion we were talking about. The main motion from the superintendent was to remove the books completely. A substantive motion was made and seconded. If that motion fails, it goes back to the original motion. That doesn't violate Robert's rule of order in any way, shape, or form. So I just want to clarify that. The original motion to remove it all is still on the floor, and if the substantive motion fails, it goes back to that original motion, which will still be there. I. Do we need a second for that original motion if this fails? That was already seconded. Been okay. seconded. Okay. So we're okay as far as Robert's rule of order, Superintendent Davis. Um, so I just want to clarify that for me, I know that it's, it's hard for certain members to say, well, if you've spoken and you say that you think that this might not be appropriate for 11-year-olds, why would we even continue this? And again, my point was, I want to keep our process in place. I made this decision based on information from the committees. Lack of filling things out, certain things they said, having conversation. If there's a book like this at another school, I want information from that committee. I want to hear from that committee if they think this is important, if they answer the questions completely, why they see 
see value in this book at this committee. The whole point of having these committees is to be able to make a recommendation and talk about it for their specific community. This book might be one thing, but we might have books that come up that talk about different communities, marginalized communities that might be reflective of those communities. And again, I don't want to erode our process. So that's why I'm supporting the substantive motion in order to make it clear, because I know it seems to be confusing to some people. Every time there's a book challenge at a specific school, I want that school to have the opportunity to talk about it, to evaluate for their community and their school, whether it's a good fit, to give us their logic behind their decisions, and to have a thorough discussion about it. Because again, that might be this book, but I don't want to see that process eroded when we talk about other books and other communities and what that looks like. So I just want to clarify that is why I supported the second and why I think that subsequent motion is important. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Superintendent Davis, did, did you want to comment? You said you wanted to comment? Yes, ma'am. Through, through the chair, I'm going to try to help this. And Mr. Porter, you stop me if not. So openly, my recommendation was to be removed just from every school in Hillsborough County. Uh, I will remove my recommendation and make a, a new recommendation with a notion that I will bring this back to the board on an additional agenda item in front of the board to remove it from every middle school. So I can go with my, I can, I formally want to remove my recommendation and then let me know when I can move forward. That is the absolute cleanest way to do this. It, 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 I think it captures the intent of what Ms. Rendon and some of the, the other board members and Dr. Hahn have spoken about. It absolutely captures the intent of the superintendent. And again, it preserves the process, as Ms. Vaughn said, and gives us the best protection we could have in a situation that is controversial from a process standpoint. OK, thank you. I'll go ahead and remove my motion. No, no. Oh, no, but, no. no. <laughs> OK, that no, motion, I, so. I Okay, actually, you're right. Um, let's, let's hit pause. So the superintendent's recommendation is to now to limit it to Pierce. Uh, as the maker of the motion originally was um, Ms. Rendon? Yes. If Ms. Rendon, is, that's the superintendent's rec current recommendation. Are you comfortable with that? Has his recommendation, do you want to keep your motion with, with his new recommendation? No, I wanted to recommend a, I wanted a motion to remove it from all middle schools. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, so now that we're, your, your motion is removed. There's no motion on the floor at all. The superintendent's recommendation is to limit it to Pierce, and if someone wants to make a motion to support that, if you want to make your motion now to limit it to all middle schools, you are creating a risk, but that's your right to do. Yes, I would like to make a motion to remove this book from all Hillsborough County middle schools. We're looking for a second. Okay. Right, and now we'll discuss that if you'd like discuss to discuss it or you can vote and then discuss it. I'm sure you'd like to discuss that. You'd like it's always after a motion if you'd like to make a discussion about that or we'll go ahead and vote. I'm aware there's a discussion. I just felt we had all discussed it enough. It would probably come to a vote. Okay. I just wanted to make sure, you know, don't have to be disrespectful. Thank you. Um, please. Um, Please go ahead and please vote when so you're. The motion on the floor now is to vote. Okay, I understand. Okay, the motion on the floor now is to not have this book as gay in any middle school in Hillsborough County. That's not the superintendent's recommendation, but that's the motion on the floor. You should vote on that. If you want to limit this to Pierce, you should vote no. If you want to prevent it from being in any school library, you should vote yes. Those, those are your options. Okay, please vote when your lights appear. So if you. Is everyone aware? Okay, the motion passed four to three. What? No, 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 no. I... Okay, that's it. Okay, okay. Any other comments? Okay, and just uh, just uh, board members, it's uh, a few minutes before one. We had planned an executive meeting. Our teachers have been waiting for a very long time to talk about salaries, and we have planned an executive meeting today. Um, but you know, as it was supposed to start at twelve, Superintendent Davis, um, I just had a question. You know, we've been waiting for the magistrate. When will we have this executive meeting? It seems like the board probably will not be able to meet today. Or I don't know, S uh, Superintendent Davis, can we talk about that? Because we had planned an executive meeting. Our teachers have been waiting a very long time. Yes, Mr. the Chair. Openly, we have been continuously waiting. We did get word we should have something today uh, related to the, uh, the magistrate's recommendation. So, uh, you know, from our side of it, our team is, is willing and able to meet based on the availability of the board. Are you, 
you guys available? One o'clock. Can we go one to two? It was supposed to be 12 to one. It's going to be an hour. Can we do one to two? You can't? It, well, obviously that wasn't, okay, so you're the only one who can't meet. This meeting is adjourned. Yeah.